like nothing else on earth and we're going to win it. You're determined that this is going to be Wexford's year. This is it and we have an under 21 engagement this day week and we're going to give that right good lash as well. You certainly have. Well at the moment I see Kieran Carey coming out beside it and here come Wexford. Here come Limerick. We were almost trampled on there. They're moving forward. I see Damien Quigley and the rest of the team. Tom Ryan is now appearing on the sideline, moving forward. The Limerick team going towards where the green and white flags are waving for Limerick. And in a very important day as well for the Limerick men. Back to you, Con. All right, Brian, thanks very much indeed. Jer Cunningham, when you hear stuff like that and you hear about, you know, fellas having tears in their eyes coming up on the bus and stuff, do you worry at all that this just might, the occasion might get to Wexford? That's, that's a possibility, Con. Uh, from the point of view of, like, there's been fierce hype all week down in Wexford, I would imagine. Um, they're really built up for this match, and, you know, everything everything has stopped in Wexford, like I'd say, except for this Hurley match today. On the other hand, Limerick are, are playing it much more low-key. They were here two years ago. Like, they were very disappointed having lost to Offaly, so they're a bit much more calm about it. If the occasion doesn't get, you know, you know, actually doesn't get to Wexford, they're in with a great chance, but if, if their concentration has been deflected by the occasion, um, you know, it, it's, very hard to, it's very hard to overcome that. Yeah, Tom Halibert, you played Wexford in the uh, semi-final. You could have beaten them. Uh, we we could have beaten them. I mean, without taking from from Wexford's performance that day, uh, Galway will admit freely to making several mistakes in the course of the game that contributed to our downfall. But having said that, Wexford went away went away and played intelligent hurling. They took their scores, and at the end of the day, it's the number of scores on the board that decides the factor. And we didn't have as many as they had. Uh, so they were worthy of their of their victory in that in that respect. Now they'll be concerned about aspects of that game. Uh, they allowed us to dominate in a few positions, and they allowed us to do things that maybe they mightn't be too happy with. But uh, at the end of the day, they got the result. And if you can get a result without being fully happy with the performance, more is the better. I mean, tomorrow morning it won't be the performance that'll be measured. It'll be the number of medals. Yeah, yeah, Johnny. Um What's the situation now? We saw Wexford were here at half one this afternoon. Limerick arrived almost an hour later at half two. Is there something in that, the psychology? You know, would Liam Griffin be trying to get the players here early to get them relaxed? I mean, we heard them talking about trying to relax the players, and yet, you know, to be here two hours before the game starts, it seems like that might have a, a reverse effect almost. Um, every player has his own way of um, getting himself geared up for the final or for the day. Uh, your mind is totally concentrated on going out and playing your own game. And as far as I could see, like whether it be in the hotel, um, your mind is on the game, or whether it be in the grounds itself. And if it be the Wexford players, if it means getting out and watching some of the minor game, if it helps you relax, then so be it. Like you know, and that's the way I look at it. If if you're happy in the grounds, stretching or whatever, getting yourself right to go out. It makes no difference where you are, as long as you're, you're thinking of the game and you're trying to keep yourself relaxed. And, you know, I'd say that's what Wexford are doing today, you know. So what are the key areas on the pitch then today? What's going to be the winning and the losing of this match? There's a lot of key areas, Con, I'd say. There's a lot of big tosses. Um, you know, I think for Wexford, as uh, Andre Day will go, Tygo Connor said, I think Wexford will have to get a great start. It's a big occasion for them, and I think they'll be looking for to, you know, to settle down early on. A couple of key players for them, I think, to look for Liam Dunn, will have a, a huge task in his hands today. I think, um, you know, Limerick... Gary Kirby has been there. He's our main strike force all year. If he's if he's held, it cuts down the options for you know from Limerick. Um, Martin Story, he's he's led Wexford brilliantly all year. He's got a job to do to lead the attack, but he's also got to stop Kieran Carey. Uh, you know they're two big they're big tasks for Wexford. So I think if they win those two, they'll be on their way. Yeah, Tom, what do you make of the... I suppose it's not a criticism, but the, the point has been made that not enough Limerick forwards score. It's all on Gary Kirby's shoulders. Well, it's all on Kirby's soldiers, soldiers in some respects in that he has to take the freeze in that and he's well able for that task. But uh, we've seen them right the way through in Munster particularly. A couple of guys came up good in, in, in tight games. Uh, we're all waiting for Quigley to have a big one. He did it in 94 and... Uh, I suppose there's an expectation out there that he can do it again today. Now, very often you'll find that the guys you're depending on in a big day like today will not necessarily come through. It'll be somebody that will be completely in from the cold and he might pop in for a goal, two or three points. And it's that kind of player today that I'd be looking for. And it could be anybody, you know. Mm. Um, suddenly, guys who have been playing well all year will find that in a final like this, they're identifiable. You know, the opposition will have worked at, at your strategy. They'll be yeah. trying to outmaneuver you. They'll certainly mark you very closely. So that will give an opportunity to somebody else, somewhere else, to do something magical. And that's what we've decided. Yeah, one man, Johnny, that uh, Michal has, I, I remember him picking him out in a couple of matches throughout the campaign, is Mark Foley, Limerick. He's had a, a good year. Yes, if, he's after coming in a good few games. And any game he came in and he has had an influence on the game. Um, 
particularly uh, the Munster final there, the drawn game, and I think the replay came in as well, and he had scored a couple of points in every game he came in, but today is a big day for him. He started from the very start. I think uh, 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 possibly is the first game I think he started this year, is it? And uh, it's a big day for him now, and uh, be a lot of pressure on him, you know. Mm. Now, bearing in mind that he's uh, going to be not listening to us at the moment because he's other things on his mind, the referee uh, today, what sort of a, an influence do you think he's going to have? <laughs> uh, that depends whether you're a defender or a forward. Uh, I think he's a good referee. You know, um, there has been a tendency in hurling this year, particularly, to let the play flow. And I think that's a great thing, really, because nobody wants a game peppered with freeze. And if a guy can get an advantage going through and, and convert a good score from play, it all adds to the value of the game. Uh, I think he's, he's an excellent referee, and I don't see him having any problems at all. I suppose, Johnny, you're going to say something nice about him being an Offaly man, anyway. Well, I, I know him pretty well, you know, from refereeing club games down in Offaly. And he is uh, a fairly consistent referee. A lot of people mightn't agree with me down in Offaly. <laughs> <laughs> but <Sure>. I, <laughs> hopefully he'll do well today, anyway. Yeah, it's a big day for him. Connell, he's, he's, got a, he's got a big task ahead of him and I wish him all the best and I hope, he, I hope it goes well for him. And you hope he gives you the decision the next time Cork are playing. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we just got over today first. Uh, as I said, myself and Tom have been uh, just talking about it today. We, we've been here for a couple of years now and we haven't, we, like, we're, I'd say we, we must prefer to be out on the pitch rather than being inside here, you know, so <laughs> maybe next year. Well, maybe next year. Third time lucky for you because this is the second year I've been talking to you at Croke Park. And I do remember at the end of the programme last year I said I hope I don't see you next year, but there you go. Uh, I should say it was Pat Horan of Offaly uh, as the referee, of course. I didn't give him his, uh, a name check there. So, um, before we uh, go for a, a, a break, a quick prediction, bearing in mind that you both went for uh, Offaly last year, Ger and Tom. Uh, quite difficult. Uh, this is this is this one is very close. Uh, it's going to be difficult to call. Um, I think you know Limerick were here two years ago. They were very disappointed after the way the way the game went for them. They'd be well psyched up. They have a good hunger, and that you know they wanted to come back to raise the memory of 1994. Um, the other hand, Wexford, and uh, it's a big day for them. Um, they've had a great year. You know, winning Leinster. Um, was, was an awful lot for them. You know, you, you know, they've been in Crow Park you know, three or four times this year already. They're used to playing here. I think that might be a slight advantage to them, and I'd take Wexford to win in a very close game. Tom Hellebert? Uh, I'd go along with Jaron and say it'll be a very, very close game. I, I think if Wexford can hold their form and not go back to the old Wexford style when the pressure comes on, they're in with a real shout. I would f fancy Limerick on the basis that I think they're a physically more capable team and I think that the experience of two years ago to say you've got to lose one to win one will be a factor, so I'll give them a slight nod. And Johnny Dooley? Um, I Casting I, vote? Well, I have to go for Wexford. Um, well, on the basis that this year, like uh, other years, uh, they squandered a lot of chances, had a lot of wides, but this year everything seems to be falling into place for them. The wides they usually have is going over the bar, and on the basis of what I've seen from them so far this year, I fancy Wexford to win it. OK, so somebody's going to be right this year anyway. That's the situation from Croke Park. We'll be back here in a second. Hi, Sir Farrell of the Examiner here. On a great day for hurling fans. The months of training are over and the winner takes it all. In the Examiner tomorrow, I'll be analysing both the senior and minor finals while Jim O'Sullivan brings the action to life, as Limerick and Wexford and Tip and Galway show what passionate hurling is all about. Great hurling today and great coverage in the Examiner tomorrow. Hi, this is Brendan O'Carroll. The course has been an unbelievable success, and we go to Toronto next and then the West End. But the good news is we're in the Gaiety for two weeks, thanks to Canada Life Insurance. You see, it's all about a positive mental attitude. This is your last chance to see the course at the Gaiety Theatre from September the 23rd and for two weeks only. <laughs> this is popular here to tell you that the National Wax Museum, Parnell Square, Dublin, has two great new attractions. Double world boxing champion Gareth Brooks and country music star Steve Collins. <laughs> and if you think I got that wrong, wait to meet Crocodile Crondee, Battler and Botman. <laughs> right. <laughs> All of the National Wax Museum. It's RT Radio 1 coming to you live from Croke Park. It's Guinness All-Ireland Hurling Final Day. And we just want to welcome listeners on Shortwave who've joined us a few minutes ago. Uh, that's listeners anywhere in the world because literally on Shortwave we are going out to North and Central America, Australia, Africa, the Middle East and Eastern Europe. And of course, as usual, on FM, Medium Wave and on the Astra Satellite, uh, again, all over the world. So wherever you're listening to us, we're very, very happy to have you with us here at Croke Park. We're about six minutes 
minutes uh, away from the throw-in here. I see uh, Mary Robinson just uh, coming back into the stand, having been introduced to the players, wearing a, a very neutral red and white today, uh, the president. So we're getting very, very close to the start of the game. Everybody's getting excited, and I'm sure Mihola Murahertig is as well. Yes, indeed. Gurumila Mahagut Khan, and what a magnificent sight is the Green of Limerick line up behind the Artane Boys Band, young and old in the band there, and the purple and gold of Wexford, and they'll be led by their captain, Martin Storey. A magnificent sight indeed with Hill 16 people by Wexford, people with their colours of the purple and gold, while the area behind the canal goal is all green and white, the green and white of Limerick. The biggest day in the hurling year, the day of the All-Ireland final, this year the Guinness final, Limerick and Wexford, they're true to that final. They met in finals twice in the past. In 1910, Wexford beat Limerick seven goals to six goals and two points in a year of objections. In 1918, it was Limerick 9-5, Wexford 1-3. The year of the big national bout of influenza, when Wexford indeed offered to walk over to Limerick, but sporting day, Limerick wouldn't accept it, but they eventually won it 9-5 to 1-3. This is 1996, won a piece so far. Limerick going for their eighth and Wexford going for their sixth. As they follow the Artane Boys band, we'll begin with the team nearest the canal right now, and that's Wexford, led by their captain, their centre forward, Martin Storey from Owlert the Ballot. Behind him, goalkeeper Damien Fitzhenry from Duffy Rovers, and behind him, the full backs, Colin Kyo of Halfway House, Bun Clody, Ger Cush of Nevena, and John O'Connor of St Martin's. Behind them come the half backs, led by Rod Guiney of Ratnur, Liam Dunt from Owlert the Ballot. We should have Sean Oak flood of club on, but poor old Sean Oak, he came out for the team photo, unfit to play, and back at half-back goes Larry O'Gorman of Faith Harriers. In the centre of the field, Adrian Fenlon of the Rapparees and the great George O'Connor of St Martins will partner him in the centre of the field. Half-forward for Wexford, Rory McCarthy of St Martins, Centre forward Martin Storey, who's leading them, and left half forward Larry Murphy of Club Owen. The full forwards are Haven of Edisha from Liam Mellows, it's Eamon Scallion. In the centre is Gary Laffin from Glyn Barn Town, and top of the left, Tom Dempsey of Buffers Alley. And they are the men of Wexford as they parade in front of the new stand on the far side of the field. Next to me come Limerick, who've already broken away from the parade. They were led by their centre-half back from Partick's well, Kieran Carey, the captain. Behind him, Joe Quaid from Fiona. Behind him, the full-back, Stephen McDonough from Brewery. Full-back, Mike Nash of South Liberties. His younger brother, Declan Nash, naturally from the same club, has left full-back in the Limerick team. Right half-back for Limerick from Kilmallock, David Clark. Ilar Beale, as I've already told you, Kieran Carey from the well, and left half back up the road in Adair, the youthful 20 year old Mark Foley. Ilar Naparki Limerick, Mike Hulhin of Kilmallock, and Sean O'Neill of Moreau Boher. The half forward, some Gary Spillane, Frankie Carroll. In the centre, the captain of 94, Gary Kirby from Partick's Well. Barry Foley, the youngest player in the field at 19, he's at the left half forward position. The massive musicians. Young and old parading in front of the railway goal. Wexford still marching with them, and we look upon the three Limerick full forwards. The man that was doubtful with an ankle injury, the right corner man, Owen O'Neill of Moreau Boher. In the centre, Damien Quigley from the Piercy. And number 15 for Limerick, TJ Ryan, the 22 year old from Gary Spillane. Well, they're the teams that will play the All-Ireland final, beginning at half past three, under the whistle of Pat Horton, and Pat Horton is an awfully man. Well, a wonderful year for Harling from start to finish. When the year began, the men of Clare, well, they were the All-Ireland champions, but then, in that wonderful match, in that wonderful clinching point by Kieran Carey, it took all the titles away from Clare, as Limerick marched on to take the Munster title. Excitement in Leinster as well, as Wexford started out by beating Kilkenny, then beating Dublin and beating Offaly, and in the All-Ireland semi-final, Limerick beating Antrim and Wexford beating Galway, and that brings us here today. And we know that we have listeners all over the world, special people in Camp Shambrook and Tiprin in the south of the Lebanon. They'll all be listening to us to our fault to 
I'm told that the 79th Battalion in Hadar to Barashid, they'll be cheering for Gary Laffin. I'm told that 83-year-old Wexford woman Nell Delaney of Auckland, New Zealand is listening out there, as is Sister Rita McCarthy, a 102 years of age, from County Limerick, listening in New Zealand, as is our good friend Oliver Lee. Peart in a Wiltshire, Top the All-Ireland final, the minor game was drawn between Tipperary and Galway. The senior game about to start in about two minutes' time. Limerick won the toss and decided to take the advantage of the breeze and play down towards the... No, they're playing down towards the canal goal. They did win the toss and uh, Kieran Carey is defending back in the 50-yard line. Limerick will be playing down towards the canal goal in the first half and that's where the bulk of their followers are. The Artain Boys Band, well, the senior band was formed a few years ago and on big occasions they join up with the normal band to entertain the people here where they're now calling the people to attention for our own of Ian and All-Ireland final day. with this great occasion in any way. The band shortly will begin their march off the field, leaving the field to 30 men fit and ready for the fray. 30 men, and they'd all been the age category described one time by Murisho Sullivan of the Blasket Island as Fehebli and Fuivlau. The 20 years between 20 and 40, when you're in full bloom of health and everything like that. Well, that's the type of men that are out on the field today. Limerick slightly the younger team, averaging 25 years of age, is against 26 and a quarter for the Wexler men. That won't matter much. First time the McCarthy Cup was played for 1921, won by Limerick, captained by Bob McConkey. It's on the All Ireland final of 1906. Stalemate with Wexford attacking the ball, picked up by Mark Foley of Limerick. The first strong puck from Mark Foley straight out over the sideline. Inside the 50-yard line, the new stand side of Croke Park, a line ball coming up to the Wexford men. The cornerback, Colm Kyo, will take it, or will Dave Guiney uh, go back? Rod Guiney go back to take it. Yes, Rod Guiney will go back to take it about eight yards back behind the 50-yard line. It was eight yards. He brought it down to about six yards behind the 50-yard line. The pitch in perfect condition. It's a dry day between dull and bright, ideal for the game of Harling as Rod Guiney sends it past the centre of the field. Blocked by Mike Holland, but whipped on down there and blocked by Larry Murphy. Larry trying to start running up towards the 50-yard line, looking now, still Larry Murphy, and Larry Murphy strikes in the ball, it's gone over the ball, the opening score of the game, Larry Murphy of club on, won it 60 yards out and went 40 yards with the ball and shot it over the bar Colino on the luck arm and no score for the Limerick men yet and Wexford playing with the breeze in the first half and a puck out coming for Joe Quaid of Fiona and Limerick the technician, the 24 year old in front of Hill 16 People by Wexford follows and Joe Quaid coming from the edge of the square and sending a mighty puck that'll drop behind the 50-yard line. Gary Kirby pulling, the ball breaks inside. Frankie Carlin is beaten and the ball comes out on the far side of the field. Brought out by the centre-back in the Wexford team, named down and gone down near the sideline and the ball there by the midfielder, Larry O'Gorman, who's playing in the half-back line. And Larry is now coming back to his position. Could be a line ball for the Wexford men and Adrian Fenlon of the Rapparees will take it. This one is inside. The 70-yard line nearer the railway goal. He's in the newsstand side of the field. Adrian Fenlon removing the 70-yard flag and then testing the stick in the referee, Pat Oden, in the 50-yard line, telling him to keep moving in. 
get the game moving Adrian Fenlon coming hitting it hard ricochets high in the air and inside the 50 yard line blocked down by Declan Ash out it comes to Frankie Carlin Frankie Carlin doesn't make clean contact George O'Connor misses it well and the ball sent out on the 50 yard line Liam Dunn blocks it comes off the athlete scooped out of the wing by Barry Foley Barry Foley can't get it tapped by John O'Connor picked up again by Adrian Fenlon Fenlon and works it away down to Tom Dempsey Tom Dempsey won't reach it it's going wide near the corner flag on Hill 16 a good block down by John O'Connor at the corner back and then the ball was whipped quickly down the field and Wexford striking the ball the cleaner since the game started but that's only two and a half minutes ago Joe Quaid of Fiona again played in the final of 94 as did most of the Limerick players attention now for Gary Kirby that high ball that came down the 50 yard line a while ago he was pulling and so was Liam Dunn and uh, Gary Kirby seems to have got a knock uh, is it a knock in the hand he's being attended to and the referee Pat Horton has come out there to come out there to have a look at it the handball finals were on last night in another magnificent All-Ireland title for Duxie Walsh of Kilkenny well we have a, I'm told we have a 90 year old man Ned Fitzgibbon of Ballinacor in Limerick here today watching his 63rd consecutive All-Ireland final Gary Kirby's OK, Joe Quaid is OK and everything is right for the resumption of play as Joe Quaid drops it beyond the 70 yard line between the 50 and the 70 Mike Hoolan pulling it, it comes to Frankie Carlo Frankie Carlo is 51 yards out, 49 yards out, moves inside not trip, hand passing the ball back to Mike Coolhead. The strong man gets the low ball inside. Damien quickly jabbed it. Jerk cushion there. Well, TJ Ryan and Gary Spillan shouldered off the ball by Colin Kehoe. Colin Kehoe drop pucking it out to Frankie Carroll. His pocket blocked inside. Coming out to Barry Foley, but big jerk push comes out along the ground and gets a second stroke and then gets it out towards Adrian Fenland. In goes Mike Hoolan. The ball is left behind. Larry the crew caught it. Larry O'Gorman loses the ball and Jamie Clark gets it for Limerick. Jamie Clark is uh, 60 yards out, drops it to the left of the goal. Out comes Jamie and Fitzhenry of Wexford, the goalkeeper, and a clearance is already on its way down. Kieran Carey jumps, comes down with the ball. Dances out to the left, turns across and centre, crossing ball. Adrian Fenlon, the best midfielder in view since the game started. Fenlon of Wexford, low and hard down the centre. Out comes Gary Laffin, the army man. Kieran Carey is there again. Kieran Carey, beautiful stylist and a clearance that's going down the left wing this time. Might come to Barry Foley. Rod Guiney reaches up, holds, turns and strikes. And Wexford are attacking again. Down towards Gary Laffin. Gary Laffin, will he get to it? Will he keep it in play? He did, he's got it across. Eamon Scallion coming across and the ball is picked up now by Kieran Carey again. Having a good game. Carey down to the left. One point to Wexford, no score yet. Gary Kirby gets it out near the far wing. Trying to get away from Liam Dunn. Gary Kirby stays with him and the referee looks on as Liam Dunn takes it from him. Comes out with the ball. And Liam Dunn sends Wexford attack again, Dempsey a little push of Declan Nash, Tom Dempsey going in picking the ball inside the 14 yard line circling out still inside the 14, a shot from the corner and the ball has gone across the goal mouth, signal wide Tom Dempsey doing well to get possession he struck a little bit hastily and Tom Dempsey a little bit disappointed that that ball went out over the line and wide across the goal still one point for the Wexford men we've five and a half minutes gone, no score for Limerick yet and Wexford playing with the breeze in the first half as Liam Griffin the manager makes his way up along the line in the far side of the field as Joe Quaid's puck out, drops again on the 50 yard line, George O'Connor there, it breaks behind, TJ Ryan TJ Ryan of Limerick, he gives it inside now Barry Foley coming in, he's 21 yards out he's hooked by Rod Guiney and the ball breaks behind and Colin Pio going in there and uh, a bit of a hardly gun flying out as TJ Ryan comes out again being pursued by two Wexford defenders the ball gone out over the line the linesman signalling off the Limerick man a line ball to Exford well it did look for a while there that there was a semi-foul on one of the on Barry Foley as he came in referee waved on play he had lost possession could be a line ball and Rod Guiney will take it, take it again this time halfway between his own 21 and the 50 yard line haven't they well than Bork he's been moved back by the linesman nearer the 21 than the 50 good top to brass underneath the ball he might be able to get this one past the centre of the field so far the dominant centre fielder has been the Wexford man Adrian Fenlon Rod Guiney strikes it in towards the centre again Frankie Carroll goes behind Frankie Carroll picking it up for Limerick a rangy player has hooked and the ball has gone out over the line the referee is giving a free to Limerick this time not a line ball for a push on Frankie Carroll 
Gary Kirby, no doubt, will go out to take this one. It's pretty near the sideline. It's inside the 70-yard line, and this would be a major boost to the men of Limerick if Gary Kirby could put this one over the bar. Wexford have won their All-Ireland title in 1910, 55 and 56, 1960 and 68. Limerick won their titles in 1897, 1918, 21, 34, 36, 40 and 73. Gary Kirby has dried the handle of the stick. He's dried it, a towel supplied from the sideline. He's placed the ball two and a half yards inside the 70-yard line, equidistant from the sideline. He's near the new stand sideline. He'll be pucking towards the canal goal, drawing the referee's attention to the fact that Owen O'Neill and George O'Connor are standing a little bit too near him. This is a vital puck for Gary Kirby. I know it's early in the game, but they haven't scored yet. Gary Kirby strikes this one hard, plenty of distance, accuracy. It's gone over the bar, and the team's on level. Gary Kirby, the centre forward from the well. Patrick's well, better known in hurling circles as the well. 1910, when Wexford won their first All-Ireland, that was the year that the side posts were removed and that the square was brought in in the game of hurling, the game of football as well. The puck out for Damien Fitzhenry, the teams are level and Colleen Owen inside the 50-yard line. Kieran Carey position well under, breaks the ball down. Will it come out towards Sean O'Neill? Sean O'Neill along the ground to Gary Kirby and Liam Dunn, breaks inside. Larry O'Gorman is there to Rod Guiney, and Guiney, the son of Jack the Rugby International wartime year, down the field, a push in the back there, a push in the back by Rory McCarthy on Mark Foley, a free to Limerick on their own 50 yard line and Mark Foley from Adair will take this, Mark who came on as a sub last year having an inspired year this year, a long ball away, way down to the corner, Damien Quigley comes out ahead of Jared Cushing, Damien Quigley gets it, he tries a crossing ball out the field, badly placed uh, in favour of defenders, Rod Guiney jab lifts it, leaves it behind him, it's struck out to George O'Connor along the ground, past the centre of the field to Larry Murphy, who's tapping it back towards Adrian Fenlon, and Fenlon lifts it between his own 50 and 70, Wexford playing the low ball towards Eamon Scallion, back behind us, Steve McDonough, Brewery and Limerick, past the centre of the field again, Frankie Carroll has got it, Frankie is 67 yards out, a massive point from Frankie Carroll of Gary Spillane there. He did get around Larry O'Gorman there. He foxed Larry as the ball came to him. And Frankie Carroll, his brothers, played for Tipperary and played for Limerick. And they played in all Ireland finals as well. But this is the younger brother, Frankie Carroll, 25 years of age. And he has sent Limerick into the lead. Two to one, nothing in it, down the centre. Kieran Carey and Martin Story. Carey pulled. The ball breaks out to the wing. A jab now and it's sent out by Mike Hulhead. TJ Ryan comes out to meet it outside the 50 yard line. Colin Kyo with him. Pushing Kyo as a tight marker. Get the ball to Gary Kirby at the low ball side towards Owen O'Neill. Owen O'Neill and John O'Connor. John O'Connor wins it. Can't lift the ball. The ball is scooped out. Might break to Barry Foley. Out comes again George O'Connor. George O'Connor tries to get it out to Rod Guiney. Guiney has it. Outside to the old 50 yard line. Wexford attacking again. Gary Laffin inside the 50. He's got the splitter. A foot outside the 50s he strikes and the ball has gone to the right to the upright and out over the line and wide but Gary Laffin the man from Glyn Barnstown who's a member of the Irish Army and I know they'll be cheering for him out in the Lebanon well Limerick people might but Limerick people out there well they'll acknowledge one of their own army men as well two points to Limerick Ian Cooleen Warnig Luck Garman Todd Genomati the Clay Canishy Lair Nimeha Joe Quaid of Limerick sets it in motion again dropping the ball inside the a bit of bunching, George O'Connor is back there, Liam Dunn is there, Dunn is swung to the ground by TJ Ryan, it's a free out to the Wexford men, Liam Dunn was the player that was fouled, the number six, he's holding two sticks at the moment, gallantly hands one back to TJ Ryan, and now he'd place the ball and strike it with the other, he's about seven or eight yards behind to the own 50 yard line, this could land down around the 21 yard line, the other side of the field, hit hard, towards the 21, a little on the 21, races inside, Damon Skellin, the goalkeeper, Joe Quaid has it, and Joe Quaid spots Davy Clark, and David Clark is on the 21 yard line, Hogan stands side of the field, out it goes, Adrian Fenland bats it down and it goes out over the sideline and out over the line to be a line ball to the Limerick men and Davy Clark, Davy Clark the fruit merchant from Kilmallock placing the ball, he's tapped a short one to Mike Hulhan, Hulhan lobs a long long ball, this will drop around the 14 yard line, Damien quickly waiting for the break, a push by Jerk Cush and Jerk get the ball out to the 50 yard line racing out to meet it as Rory McCarthy beaten by Mark Foley Mark Foley of Limerick goes forward he'd been followed by Rory McCarthy stays with him and Mark Foley from a way out the sideline near the sideline to the left of the upright and out over the line and wide Limerick first wide two wides for Wexford and the game began 11 and a half minutes ago in case you don't know the venue it's Croke Park Ireland and the occasion 
Where he can issue more in the hair. The All Ireland hurling final between Limerick and Wexford. The puck out has dropped out by Damien Fitzhenry. 14 members of the family watching the game here today at the 50th and stayed at home to mind Wexford. The puck has went out over the line to be a line ball to the Limerick men. And Mike Hulhen, the strong cattle jobber, will take this one can strike a great line ball, a powerfully built man, low and thick set, hit by Mike Hulhan, drops it towards the 21-yard line, Rod Guiney reaches up, Barry Foley, Damien Quigley, Jeff Cushion there, tapped by Owen O'Neill, a chance at Barry Foley, the young Barry Foley strikes it well, and it's come over the bar. Barry Foley of Partick well, the chicken farmer, 19 years of age, has put Limerick two points clear, three to Limerick and one to Loch Garman, and plenty of time to go, 12 and a half gone, and it's a 70 minute game. Damien Fitzhenry down in the goal in the right, a Duffley Rovers man, a great character, out to the edge of the square and launches the puck out that'll sail past the 70 yard beyond midfield as Hulhan goes in. Sean O'Neill down the wing. Barry Foley, TJ Ryan, breaking again towards Barry Foley. Barry Foley has it again, a second shot and a second point for the young Barry Foley. 19 years of age, he came on in one of the games at Munster and scored a vital point and he scored two today. Four to Limerick and one to Wexford. Wexford getting the opening score. Limerick will remember 94 when they were leading by five points when that avalanche of Offaly scores came. Not one, not two, but seven scores that swept the McCarthy Cup all the way down to Offaly. And Damien Fitzhenry gets it down again. Limerick playing inspired hurling. Martin Story and Kieran Carey. Kieran Carey content to bat it down. Adrian Fenland goes in. 40 yards out, drops it in. Is it over the head of the goalkeeper? No, into his hands, the goalkeeper and Joe Quaid. And Quaid, with a typical Limerick name, gets it away down again toward Barry Foley and Rod Guiney. TJ Ryan, TJ Ryan along the ground. TJ Ryan for Limerick. 40 yards out. He's lost the stick, gets it to Damien Quigley. This man can be a goal scorer. Damien Quigley scores a point. A man that's more noted for scoring goals. He scored another point for the Limerick men. Five to Limerick and one to Wexford, and Limerick playing flawless hurling, and they're playing as crafty as well. I noticed that Joe Quaid playing the puck out for some while to Barry Foley down in the left wing, because Barry has the upper hand of Rob Guiney over the past ten minutes. A massive puck out from Damien Fitzhenry. It well inside the 50-yard line, Davy Clark standing, holding, dropping back to Steve McDonough. McDonough's puck was deflected out there by out there by Eamon Scallion that's gone out over the line. It did look as if it was deflected by the stick of Scallion. No, says the linesman, he was much nearer to it than I am. It's a line ball to Exford. 50 yards out from the Limerick goal. The Schlitter has been thrown into the linesman. The linesman gives it to Adrian Fenlon and he'll place it somewhat outside the 50-yard line. Hogan stands side of the field. We haven't seen a goal. We haven't seen a goalkeeper tested yet. Could this one drop in around Gary Laffin's territory at the edge of the square from Adrian Fenlon? Drops it in. Gary Laffin and comes out, the ball breaks inside and it blocks inside by Joe Quaid. Without catching, he clears it will drop outside the 50-yard line. Again, Barry Foley is there. Barry Foley having an inspired game for the Limerick, tackled by Rod Guiney. And Guiney gets it back down inside, blocked by Kieran Carey, being pursued by Martin Story. Martin without the helmet, the ball breaks inside. Kieran Carey is there, beaten by Tom Dempsey. Tom Dempsey gets it along the ground. Declan Ash gets it out, the National gets it out. George O'Connor is there to pick it up for the Wexford men. Drop hooks it inside. Away goes the full-back Mike Nash. Mike Nash out to bar. To Mark Foley, Mark Foley out to the 50-yard line, two Wexford men there. It comes again now toward Larry O'Gorman, and Larry O'Gorman away out the field, loved the ball in. This one has gone over the bar. A point for the Wexford men by Larry O'Gorman. Half-back wandering out after Frankie Carl around midfield. He picked up the loose ball 50 yards out, and Larry O'Gorman is the man that has scored Wexford's second point. It's five to Limerick, it's two to the Wexford men. We have... Uh, 15 minutes and 45 seconds gone, non-stop action, a great uh, capacity crowd as Joe Quaid comes to the puck out from the edge of the square. Joe Quaid drops it down, will drop 50 yards from the other goal a little beyond it. Frankie Carroll breaks the ball down toward Mike Hoolan. Mike Hoolan has tackled hard, stays in the field, the ball breaks again to Larry O'Gorman. Larry has tackled and it's a free to Exford. Wexford, uh, Gary Kerb is out and Mike Hoolan is out calling for a new stick. Owen O'Neill is on the ground, whatever happened there, the linesman saw it. The, the umpire saw it, the umpire now is calling. John O'Connor is shaking his fingers, but Owen O'Neill, the corner forward, the Limerick team, as Dave Mahidi runs in. The umpire, he, the hand up, and he was calling the referee's attention to something that happened there. We'll follow the referee's uh, progress as he makes his way out. Will he go towards Owen O'Neill? Will he go towards John O'Connor? 
The referee is coming, he's asking John O'Connor to get up and the notebook is out. The notebook is out, Owen O'Neill is still on the ground, Gary Kirby getting a little bit of a bandage onto the hand there and uh, the name of John O'Connor has been taken that's the first name to be taken now will he add the name of Owen O'Neill to it or is he just coming out to check that Owen O'Neill is okay Owen O'Neill had a suspect ankle coming into the game he's on his feet he appears to be booking Owen O'Neill as well he does appear yes he's, is he calling Owen O'Neill aside now or will he call both of them aside I think this is the time that the referee should issue a certain warning to anybody the seen to be in breach of the rules of the game. He's having a word with both of them, John O'Connor of St. Martins and Wexford playing at left full back and Owen O'Neill. Owen O'Neill of Muru Bohar and Limerick, they're both resumed and they both seem to be none the worse for the experience. Well, their names are in the notebook, five points to two. That was the first break and play. The referee is now going out, he's taking the name of Mike Hoolahan. Well, had he decided to take the name of Mike before he moved? Yes, giving the free to Wexford, they were entitled to that free. Mike Hoolahan doing a little bit of talking, and this might break the rhythm of the Limerick players. They had been hardly well. The free will be taken by Liam Dunn. On brilliant days, I've seen Liam Dunn send them over, but no, they've called John O'Connor out to take it. He's too well, one yard behind his own 70-yard line. He's uh, 90 yards out, 91 yards out. A bit of booing for John O'Connor, that's unfair. We didn't see what happened there. John O'Connor will lift it, strike here. This has plenty of length, massive length, and it's gone over the bar from the 91 yards out by John O'Connor. A wise decision by Liam Dunn, looking behind and John O'Connor. And of course, John will be remembering the free he missed in the league final against Cork and Tipperay down in Thornless one year, a few years ago. A free, if it had been scored, that would have given victory to Wexford that day at the end of the game. Testing of the Schlitter down by Joe Quaid. It's five points to three, Limerick leading. Wexford have got the last two scores. Joe Quaid dropping it down again towards Barry Foley and Rod Guiney in the far side of the field. George O'Connor goes out with Sean O'Neill and the ball goes out. It appeared to go off the hand of Sean O'Neill and Limerick, Limerick man. So it's a line ball to the Wexford men and Rod Guiney will take it. Rod Guiney will take it about seven yards behind the 70 yard line. And he might try and get this across, but Adrian Fenland prominent early on, not so in the past 10 minutes, a good opening 10 minutes. Rod Guiney sides it in, drops it well inside the 50-yard line. Kieran Carey content to break it out. Gary Laffin comes out to collect it inside the 50-yard line, moves out to the 50-yard line. A left-handed stroke that'll drop the ball in the 40-yard line. David Clark at there, and the ball blocked, and the ball has gone into the bottom left by Tom Dempsey. A goal for the Wexford men and Tom Dempsey, the scorer. Rod Guiney was the man that took the line ball and then it broke and nobody controlled it and Tom Dempsey was in to sweep it to the back of the net and Wexford are leading in the All-Ireland final and how those on Hill 16 love that score for Wexford Tom Dempsey, the man from Buffers Alley 1-3 to Wexford, that's a total of 6 5 points to Limerick in a game that literally anything can happen We've 19 minutes and 56 seconds gone. The puck out is taken. A little bit more central this time. John O'Connor and Sean O'Neill. Mike Oulan beaten by Eddie and Fenland. Down it comes. In it comes again. Pulled on by Barry Foley. The race is on his side. John O'Connor and Owen O'Neill. John O'Connor turns and scoops it out to the 14-yard line. Owen O'Neill not apparently able to run that fast. The clearance is out by John O'Connor toward the sideline. A great catch held there by Rory McCarthy, but he was out over the line. Now, the linesman was right on the spot. The rule is the ball has to be over the line. All of the ball, well, McCarthy was clearly out over the line. Ball and all, as they say in Cork, and it's a line ball to the Limerick men. It's on the 50-yard line. Hogan stands side of the field, and Mike Hoolahan will, ta will take it for a while. Limerick had a great rhythm to their play. That was broken by the persistence of Wexford and Larry O'Gorman scoring an inspired play. And then the goal by Tom Dempsey in their leading. Mike Hoolahan, could he put them level? This is a line ball, 50 yards out, Hogan stands side of the field. Cut by Mike Hoolahan, dangerous ball, drop in hell by Damien. Damien Fitzhenry comes out, he's on the edge of the square, drop hooks it away out to the 70-yard line, Kieran Carey advances, Kieran Carey has it, he's gone inside the 50-yard line, he's gone past George O'Connor, Kieran Carey from the left wing, it's gone over the bar by Kieran Carey, the captain, inspired play, the beautiful running of an Olympian athlete, the way he won that ball. Got away from the men and from the left side of the field, over the bar at their level. Cool look at Sheikh Ulinik Lockarman, Sheikh Ulinik Limnock, 
Agus Tano with the Gaspeha than Gaird Lameha, Pokamak the Damien Fitten, the Ola Garman, Hard Lord the Port, Kikown on other fraud, Lashing the Lena Fagasdor, Dave Mig, Dave Eager brings it, David Clark clears it down the field. Oh no, he comes out and John O'Connor ahead of the ball and left behind, but Liam John lifts in. Liam John and Wexler gets it, clears it past the centre of the field. Adrian Penland and Mike Coolen breaks behind. Davy Clark and Larry Murphy, the banker against the fruit farmer. The fruit farmer trying to get it out to the wing, booted by Mike Coolen along the ground. John O'Connor comes out again, loses the stick, but boosts the ball to the brother, the brother of George, and George to Larry O'Gorman. And Gorman down the centre. Martin Story, the captain, very little in the game. He's a chance, he's 60 yards out, and he takes the chance. And Wexford are leading again. The captain, Martin Story, sent it over from 60 yards out. Up to then, Kieran Carey at centre back from Limerick. He has been the master of Martin Story in the personal duel of the captains in this intriguing All Ireland final. 1 4 to Wexford and 6 points to Limerick. 22 minutes and 30 seconds gone. Joe Quaid of Fjohan and Limerick down in the goal in the left in front of Hilsa Seed. Pucking it down the centre this time. He's varying the puck out. Frankie Carroll and Larry O'Gorman. Breaks towards Gary Kirby. Gary Kirby not that much in the game. In goes George O'Connor. George O'Connor boots it. Played football for Wexford as well. Down the right wing. Larry Murphy. Larry Murphy has it. Passes the ball to Rod Guiney. Guiney is 60 yards of his own goal. Hits it fast and hard down the centre. Eamon Scallion coming in. Joe Quaid coming out. Joe Quaid holding it. Under pressure at the edge of the square. Out to Declan Ash and Declan Ash from the fourth. 14 to the 50 on the other side of midfield. Rod Guiney reaches up, the ball breaks out. Liam Dunn dives in. TJ Ryan gets it for Limerick. TJ Ryan is 60 yards out. The hand pass to Barry Foley. Barry Foley going forward. Barry Foley in the scoring position. Are we about to see the equaliser again? We are Barry Foley, the man. Barry Foley from Patrick's Well has levelled the scores again. 1 4 to Wexford and 7 points to Limerick. And we have plenty of time to go, even to half time. 23 and a half gone, 35 plus a little bit of stoppage. TJ Ryan is down on the ground. He slung a very fast pass that time to, to Barry Foley. And maybe in turning that he wrenched a knee or an ankle. He's down inside the 50 yard line. The teams are level. The goal came to the Wexford men. The scorer was Tom Dempsey. Tom Dempsey, that's a long number of years playing on the Wexford senior teams and, of course, playing for the great Buffers Alley, the club of Tony Dorton. The Wexford selectors, manager Liam Griffin, Rory Kinsel and Seamus Barton. The referee is going down and he's ordering somebody off the line, somebody who's come in from the line. Limerick selectors, Tom Ryan, Bernie Savage and Liam Lennon and, of course, the trainer, Dave Mahidi, with them. The puck out is taken, far side of the field, George O'Connor leaves it to Rory McCarthy. Rory McCarthy drops it inside towards Gary Lappin and Mike, Davy Clark is back there against him, back Gary Lappin, Gary Lappin with a chance, gets it and strikes it and it's gone over the board again. Gary Lappin the full forward, the massive full forward, built in the traditional size of full forwards like Nick Rackett in the past. Well, he's got it over the bar. It's now 1-5, a slender lead of one point to the men of Wexford, who last won an All-Ireland title in 1968. Limerick last won in 73. Joe Quay, Joe Quay down in front of the hill at 16, drops it down, 52 yards out to the Wexford goal. Gary Kirby can't get it, Liam Dunn gets it out, George O'Connor jab lives it, taking off his stick, Sean O'Neill sent it across, trying to get it again, Barry Foley, Rod Guiney, Larry O'Gorman has gone over, there's a switch in the Wexford half-back line, then Larry O'Gorman has gone forward, being pursued by Barry Foley, Larry O'Gorman inside the 50-yard line, he's hooked by Kieran Carey, Kieran Carey goes back, wins possession, gives it back to Barry Foley, Barry Foley's pocket knocked down by Matthew Story, Tom Dempsey comes in to try and get it, Matt Foley's there for the Limerick man. The ball doesn't come up cleanly to anyone. Tom Dempsey is in there again, and Dempsey has it. Dempsey, 40 yards out in the right wing, dropped it in. A deflection didn't come in or out, and the ball hopped and rolled and went out over the line and wide. The Lebanon people, I hope you're enjoying this wherever you are, whether you're with, in Camp Shambrook and Tibrin, or whether you're in Hasdata, Barashit with the 79th Battalion. It's 1-5 to Wexford and 7 points to Limerick. Yes, a switch in the Wexford half-back line, a wide switch. They brought Rod Guiney, who wasn't doing well, and Barry Foley over to the left, and Larry O'Gorman has gone over to keep an eye on the 19-year-old at the puck out breaks to the same 19-year-old along the ground, across to this side of the field. Guiney is beaten the time by Frankie Carroll. Frankie Carroll tried to get through, he's fouled, and it's a free... Just outside the 50-yard line, a chance for Gary Kirby. Gary Kirby, who is not by any way prominent in general play, but he put over a wonderful point from 70 yards out near the sideline. 
he's placing the ball just outside the 50 yard line won five to Wexford and seven points to Limerick are we about to see the teams on level terms their whole score if Gary Kirby sends this one over the bar wrong hand below but the hand he's used to sends it and the teams are level again eight points for Limerick and won five to the Wexford men 26 minutes and some seconds gone in the puck out coming up from Damien Fitzhenry of Joffrey Rover. Several members of the Fitzhenry family, they played hurling and football for Wexford between brothers and sisters, 15 in the family, and only poor Anne left at home. Down his drums, dropping within 35 yards out, Kieran Kerry beat by Martin Story. Martin Story held it well in the air, he was fouled as a free into Wexford and a chance for the lead again. Will it be Tom Dempsey or will it be Eamon Scallion? Scallion has discarded the helmet, started the day out with a helmet. Now, Eamon Scallion had bad luck in the All-Ireland semi-final when he widened a free early on from roughly this position. He's anxious to make amends. Is he thinking of the Galway game? Is he thinking just of the All-Ireland final? The free is about 30 yards out. He's standing properly over it, lifting the ball neatly, swinging well, and he makes no mistake. And Wexford are leading again. Cool like a shake who lead like Lock Garman, up go leading by the men of Limerick in a day that's ideal for hurling. A capacity attendance of 65,000 people are there about. The puck out will be Joe Fades. One six to Wexford and eight points to the Limerick men. Is there another goal at either side before half time? The puck out will be Joe Quaid. Where will Joe Quaid try it this time? The good goalkeeper say, find the man that's playing well. George O'Connor breaks it down, Rory McCarthy along the ground, Kieran Carey and Martin Story. Carey wins it again to Mark Foley, the strong Adair man to Barry Foley of Patrick's Well. 53 yards out, high and long, and what a game this young Barry Foley is having. He has scored four points, an inspired selection because until today he hardly ever started a game in championship for Limerick four points and he's 19 years of age whether it's on Rod Guiney or Larry O'Gorman he seems to attract the ball up to that stick and so far the uh, tag for man of the match would rest with between him and Kieran Carey the brilliant centre back in the Limerick team down it comes Edin Fenden bats it down Mike Hoolan behind him Fenden low goes inside Eamon Scallion Scallion across to Story Story's inside the 15 he's got the splitter he'd been held he'd been held did the referee wave him on yes he's allowing it he was going to give the advantage there for once Martin Story there. Well, he's done it twice in the past five minutes that he slipped here on Carey. One that he caught high in the air and shot. The other one that came to him, he controlled it. And then when he appeared to be fouled by Kieran Carey, he went on. The referee had given him the advantage. Won seven to Exeter, they're leading again by one point, nine points to Limerick. And Joe Quay, the goalkeepers are pretty active since the game started. Down the right wing this time, Frankie Carl under Mike Hulham taps it inside. Oh, no, Neil is definitely hobbling on the Limerick team. Out to come, Larry Murphy's lost the stick. He can pick it up, he's done it neatly. The hand pass now to George. George is hooked. Drop pucks it down. Kieran Carey is there again outside his own 50 yard line. Across it goes again towards Barry Foley. Barry Foley beaten by Larry O'Gorman. He's lost the stick and he's trying to do a canter and on it breaks soccer. It's in the way down now to Damien Quigley. Damien Quigley and Jerk Bush, the big strong man, the full back from Mayweather, gets it and again boots it out towards the centre of the field. Sean O'Neill breaks it down. Frankie Carlin trying to lift it. He's got it. Frankie Carlin is 60 yards out. Hits it, deflected. Go towards Owen O'Neill. Owen O'Neill has it. He's a good man to turn. Owen O'Neill on the right wing. Strike Makes it hard, that's a lovely, lovely point by Owen O'Neill from Limerick. And now they're level once again. Owen O'Neill, he's definitely in trouble with that ankle of his. And it wouldn't surprise me if we saw a Limerick sub coming on shortly. Perhaps they'll leave him on now because he scored that point. He's good at getting the ball in the wing and then turning sharply and leaving his man behind. But the footing today is not perfect by Owen O'Neill. Had a fitness test this morning out in Luke and he passed the test. Well, he passed the last test of scoring. 1-7 to 10. Pass it down by Mike Hoolan. Out toward the side of the field. Adrian Fenlon. Fenlon of Wexford on the 70 yard. High, long and dropping. Dropping between the 14 and the 21. Mike Nash breaks him down. A chance out. Laffin. Laffin going through. Laffin with a chance of a goal. A wonder save. A wonder save by Joe Quaid. Joe Quaid will be knighted in Limerick for that. The referee is in there. Really from six yards out, Joe Quaid got to it and got the ball out. A little bit of a skirmish developing now. The referee would do best now to quell it in there. Martin Story is in there and I think they'd all be better now to move aside and let the referee take what action needs to be taken. Well, still, this is a pity to see this developing. They're moving out the field. There's a lot of pushing and shoving. 
your serious strikey and in comes Frankie Carroll quite unnecessary to come back down it's in the other half of the field referee well the, the, the action had moved from the 14 yard line much nearer the 50 yard line Frankie Carroll and Larry O'Gorman are exchanging words and I don't think they're poetic words right now even though down there around Limerick there was a famous school of poetry filling them all long ago Andreas Mutra, but now I make sure like Hush the Hound and so on but the referee now is down in the 40 yard line I don't know whether he'll take names if he does he'll need a new notebook We've two bookings and maybe three since the game started, and the game started 32 minutes ago. This is the centenary of finals being played in Croke Park. 1896 were the first finals to be played in Croke Park, and with the exception of the football final, the football final in New York in 1947, all finals have been played here, and of course the centenary hurling final in Thornless in 1984. Gary Laffin, well, has he got a replacement jersey? He certainly took it off was it to show somebody some marks but again to come back to a good shot by Gary Laffin a marvellous save by Joe Quaid I'm not sure now how many have been booked well uh, Limerick uh, Kieran Carey has been booked only two so far Adrian Fenland has now been booked and Kieran Carey has been booked we'll follow the play I think it's more interesting Billy Borden is running along the line in the far side of the field Referee is calling plays out to the 21 yard line of the wing and he throws in Stephen McDonough pulling. Stephen McDonough gets it out of the wing. The referee now is calling again. Eamon Scallion has been called and called now for what they used to describe one time in Dublin as previous pulling. A little bit previous. And uh, Eamon Scallion has sent off to extra team. Eamon Scallion, their left corner, their right corner forward, who was actually playing on the left, he's been sent off as the referee threw in the ball on the 21-yard line. Stephen McDonough is showing the knock he got in the leg. It was a high pull. And Eamon Scallion and Wexford down to 14 men. Will this have a significant bearing on the result of the game? One would imagine that might have, but then we know of the fighting stories of teams with 14 and less in All-Ireland finals. The free is for Joe Quaid. Joe Quaid dropping it from his own 21, down towards the 21 on the other side of the field. Gary Kirby's hand goes up, breaks the ball, gets it on the rebound. He gets the ball out of the wing. George O'Connor tried to get in the ball now to TJ Ryan, TJ Ryan and Frankie Carroll in there. Frankie Carroll can't get swinging room, he's blocked when he does. Rod Guiney reaches up, comes out with the ball. Rod Guiney behind his own 50-yard line, down toward Tom Dempsey and Declan Ash. Tom Dempsey craftily the little shoulder that gets him inside his man. Tom Dempsey, Tom Dempsey the goal scorer in along the end line. Can he make it closer? Tries to get it out, the umpire watching closely. Close to the end line. Declan Nash is there. Declan Nash brings it for Limerick and gives it out to Mark Foley. This is a strong man and a fine player. And he sent a 90-yard free down the field. Gary Kirby over under, tapped out by Liam Dunn. Pulled by George O'Connor. George O'Connor towards Adrian Fenlon. Across goes Mike Hoolan. Mike Hoolan can't catch on to Adrian Fenlon. Fenlon from the right side of the field, drops it inside. Larry Murphy jumps up, breaks the ball. There's Stephen McDonough, the man that was on it. Tom Dempsey, Tom Dempsey grabs it, shoots and sends it over the ball and wins the lead again. That ball should have been controlled by Stephen McDonough. He was on his own, but only for the, a split second or a fraction of a split second didn't hold it fully and then Tom Dempsey was in to send it over the bar one eight to Wexford and ten points to the Limerick man 35 minutes gone the referee could add on about 90 seconds Wexford leading by one point the breeze with him in the first half the puck out by Joe Quaid Joe Quaid away down towards the 50 yard line Gary Kirby waiting the ball goes inside Barry Foley again overruns it Larry O'Gordon goes back it's inside by Colm Kyo and Colm Kyo dashes out he's on the 50 yard line it's Lyle Liam Dunn gets it out now towards Edwin Fenlon Fenlon is smothered by a, a massive way of Limerick players Rocked up by Damien Quigley toward Mike Hoolan. Mike Hoolan can't get it up. Very untidy play. Referee is in there. This from Pat Horn. The referee will be a referee's throwing ball there. Limerick did have the advantage in numbers there, but they didn't avail of it. Sean O'Neill pulls on it. Coming to TJ Ryan. TJ Ryan of Limerick is 50 yards out. Could this be the equaliser again? TJ Ryan to the right as we look down on the canal goal in a wide for Limerick. Only their second wide of the game and three wide for Limerick. Very good, accurate. Uh, accurate scoring by both sides Liam Griffin is on the field moving around wondering how he'll deploy his 13 men or his 14 men the pocket come from Damien Fitzhenry down on the right side this will drop around the centre of the field Martin Story breaks it Kieran Carey drop pucks it out to the wing again 
Larry O'Gorman and, and Barry Foley are free to exit for a chop by Barry Foley of Limerick. Barry Foley, the left half forward who scored four points, and Frankie Carnell throwing a bit of a broken Hornley out toward the sideline. John O'Connor is coming out from the left full back position. John O'Connor of St. Martin's, a production manager. This free is just about five yards inside the 70 yard. It's 12 yards from the new stand sideline. Breeze behind him, pucking towards the railway goal. And what a cheer will rise from the Wexford followers on Hill 16 if John O'Connor, brother of George, of course, sends this one over the bar. He's about to lift it and then strike it. Plenty of elevation, no accuracy. Away to the right and out over the line and wide. 1 8, that's a total of 11 for Wexford and 10 points for the Limerick men. We're two minutes beyond the normal 35. Pat Horden is quite likely to blow the half time whistle once this puck out lands and the puck out will be coming from Joe Quaid. Joe Quaid will put Limerick attacking, but whether they have any more time to add to it or Wexford have time to come back, we'll know no, no more, says referee Pat Horden. The players rush towards the dressing room. A very, very interesting first half. The major score, the Tom Dempsey goal for Wexford. It came there into the railway goal. It's 1-8 to Wexford at half-time, and it's 10 points. The other significant thing about the scoring that, that Barry Foley at left half forward has scored four for Limerick as we go to the analysts and Con Murphy back behind us in the stand. OK, Mihal. just before we get a word from the panel, let's go straight to Tom Rooney. I have with me Dave Mahidi, the man who handles Limerick's fitness. Happy so far? Happy so far. Um, as, you know, we're playing against the win in the first half and if we're anyway close, I was hoping for that at halftime. Well, we know in other field games, sometimes to have an extra man is a disadvantage. You're a man of experience in soccer and all of that. How do you see that going? That's right, it can be. Um, as long as we, we get in now and sort it out at halftime um, and we know what we're doing, that's half the battle. But sometimes you don't when you don't get them in at halftime. After the game boiled over there, do you think we're back to, to norm, as they say? I would hope so, but that, you'll get that in, in a game of this nature, you know, with everything at stake. What will be the message inside? Keep it calm, do it professionally, and work to keep taking your points. OK, that's it from Dave Mahidi. And from Dave Mahidi, we're going straight to Brian Carthy. Yes, with me now is Wexford selector Rory Kensler. One point in it, but you're a point down. You're a man down. We're a man down. We're still, um, it's a very physical game, as everybody can see. Uh, we'll have to try and, and look at the situation when we've been to the dressing room and see how we can turn this uh, to our advantage. We've had some good patches of play, and we're still in the lead. I saw Eamon Scallon passing by with tears in his eyes. Bitter disappointment. The rest of us have to go in that extra bit of an effort to win this, and that's possibly what could happen today, you know. Uh, they haven't, from, since he was sent off, they haven't suffered so far. They're playing pretty well since. Although you know? I suppose, Gerard, there is a long time to go. There is kind of, like, if that happened in the second half, I could see what Johnny is saying could happen, you know, that they would raise their game. But I think uh, at the moment, at Limerick are inside, they're getting their thoughts, they have 35 minutes on how, and they're saying, how are we going to use the extra man? Everything's in their favour, they're, they're, they're playing with an extra man, it's a question, how are they going to use him? Are they going to leave the cornerback free or will they push him up the field? Everything's in their favour now at this stage. Yeah, Tom, we were talking about the Limerick forwards before the game and bar TJ Ryan, they've all contributed and Barry Foley with four has been contributor in chief, but they've all chipped in with their points. They have and you know, going back to what I said before the game, if you look at Gary's performance overall, he hasn't contributed generally from play. Now he's hit two superb frees, the first one in particular was a, a deadly free. Uh, but young Barry Foley has, has really gone out and exploded. Uh, Wexford have had to switch wing-backs over. Uh, now, since Larry O'Gorman went over, his influence has been less and less. But nonetheless, he's got four points in the first half. Uh, you know, if he came away from the whole game with four points, he'd be very pleased. Yeah. So his contribution has been immense. Jared, just before we, we have to take an ad break, but before we do, um, a quick word. This isn't television, so we can't replay Joe Quaid's save, but as a goalkeeper, you'd have to appreciate that it was one of the saves of the season. Absolutely fantastic. The ball came in. I think the full forward grabbed it. Um, he... It was, a, it was a miraculous save. He, he must have hit it from less than 10 or 12 yards. Well, didn't get the ball in the net. Very hard to stop a ball like that. Yeah. But really, when you think of it, the save that Joe Quaid made later on was the, the highlight of the game so far. A brilliant, Absolutely. brilliant save. OK, now we're just uh, changing a microphone on Michael Dryden at the moment. While we're doing that, Sherlock Nan, let's have a look at the sending off incident. Well, no question about the sending off incident. Now, on its own, it mightn't have been so bad, you know, but it came after a fracas between a yeah. whole number of people. And, it, and the referee felt that he had to take control, otherwise the game would get out of his reach altogether. So it was a very wild stroke, he's a very inexperienced player. You hate to see him going off, sure. you hate to see something like that happen. And you feel for the player, it was just the hype, the excitement at the moment. He got caught, he was sent off, no question about it, but he had to be sent off. But it, it, it was a result of what happened later on. 
Michael Dijkman, the referee, has really done his best in what has, has proved to be a difficult circumstance in this match. Yeah, on the Ireland final, the first 10 or 15 minutes is always going to be tough. But this, this incident before half-time was particularly ugly in that a lot of players got involved for no reason. And I know Pat Horne is a club mate of my own at home. And he's a very fair-minded referee. He doesn't like sending players off, but he's not afraid to take hard decisions. And he had to, as Ger said, aim the stroke wasn't that bad on its own, but he had to take action at that stage. And it's, it's very unfortunate to see a player being sent off in Ireland, but that's the way it goes. Well, Ger, apart from that melee, there was so much to admire in this first half. Now, not the least of these four points scored by Barry Foley. No doubt about it. We were talking about beforehand about some player coming out of the pack and producing a big display. Well, this is the rabbit out of the hat, Barry Foley. He has scored four points on play. He's running all over the field. He gave Rod Guiney a thorough time in the first 20 minutes. Larry O'Gorman went over on him, and he scored another point of Larry O'Gorman. He's having the game of his life. It's a dream. It's a dream for him. And four points in the first half, not bad. Let's look at this save again. This is this brilliant save by, by Joe Quaid. Well, this is an incredible reflex save. Now, he did in the semi-final off yeah. from Johnny Carson against Antrim. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he has no, he has no time to think of it. Now, it, it's fairly close to him, but he gets his holy up. It's a fantastic, one of the greatest saves I'd say ever in an All Ireland final. That, that is there. You don't even appreciate it fully when you see it in slow motion, no. but it happened just in front of us That's here, thing, and you it, really, really had to. You to just couldn't it. see him having the chance to get his holy up that, that, that fast, but he got it up, made a save. He has fantastic reflexes, sure. Joe Quaid, no doubt about it. Okay, Gerard, Marty Morrissey has some news for us, I think, so let's go and join Marty. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Sean Flood, I know you're disappointed not to be out there, but what's the mood like uh, in the Wexford dressing room at half time? Well, they're fairly calm in there at the moment. They're trying to calm down and get themselves focused on the second half, like, you know, Marty. Are there any changes? Can we expect any changes? There's no changes as far as I know, anyhow. What about that sending off? Did that upset, do you think, the whole balance of the Wexford team and the mood of the team, or did it, in fact, encourage them? Well, could you say that again? I can't really hear you there now with the crowd. It's that bad. What do you think the effect of the sending off has had on the Wexford team? Well, they just have to regroup, like, and, and, and try all the harder. Like, sometimes it works to an advantage even when you lose a man because people will give it that little bit more extra, like, you know? So hopefully, that's, that's what they're thinking, like. I'm sure you'd love to be out there now for the second half. Surely would. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sean Flood. Well, Marty, I'm sure that Heyman Scallum would love to be out there for the second half as well, but uh, it's a 14-man Wexford with a point lead who take on Limerick. Let's go back again to Tomás McCahey and Ger Canning. Yes, we're just wondering how indeed Limerick will use their numerical advantage, and uh, it seems to me Dave Clark is now becoming the free man. I think that's a very good move to put uh, Steve McDonough on to somebody. He's been put on to Larry Murphy. Second half underway then, and straight away it's Gary Lappin. Left and it goes across the goal mouth and outside, outside the upright and wide. 14 seconds gone. Wexford won eight. That's a total of 11. 10 points to the Limerick men. And if you're listening at home, Paddy Doyle, brother of Jimmy, injured coming home from training the other night. We hope you're okay. And James Murray also down there in Ballingarry in Tipperary. And Pat and Ursula Griffin. Patagos, brother of Liam Griffin over in England, couldn't make it. Here come the Limerick men, but Liam Dunn goes back to defend and to collect it for Wexler on his own 21 toward the sideline, eight in Fenlon, beaten by Frankie Carl. And Frankie Carl, he's been blocked down quite a lot all day. It went off his stick as well and out over the line. He had the ball, it was blocked, and it went off Carl and out over the line. A line ball coming up to the Wexler men, and Rod Guiney will take it. Rod Guiney playing in the left half back position following that switch in the first half and he cuts this one down toward the 50 yard line. Davy Clark reaches up, breaks the ball, doesn't get it, Martin Story does it, wrecks it outside the 50 yard line, drops it inside, Joe Quaid holds it and then lets it go quickly. It will drop in the 70 yard line, Adrian Fenlon and Mike Hull and the ball breaks to Frankie Carroll, pulling along the ground. Hasn't been Carroll's day totally, come to Gary Kirby, Gary Kirby 67 yards out, gets a low ball inside, controlled beautifully inside and is controlled by Larry O'Gorman. Down the field it goes, Tom Dempsey again, outside the 50, taps it neatly inside, racing on is Rory McCarthy. Rory McCarthy gets it to Gary Laffin, and Gary Laffin shoots, and this one goes to the left. Gary Laffin has had two attempts at scoring in the second half. One went outside the upright and now right, and the other outside the upright and now left, and both uprights in front of the canal goal. So the score remains, 1-8 to Wexford and 10 points to Limerick. Puck out for Joe Quaid, the breeze behind him, it's not that strong, and Joe Quaid will drop this one on the 50-yard line beyond midfield. That's my estimate of where the Schlitter will land. It might even go beyond it. Beyond it it goes, and 15 full yards beyond it. TJ Ryan breaks it down. In goes George O'Connor. Frankie Carroll comes in to collect it. And again, Frankie Carroll is blocked, and George O'Connor gets the ball behind. 
and passes the ball out to the wing and this side the field and Jared Cush has come out the field Big Jared lobs it away, way down the field Wexford attacking again Tom Dempsey inside Declan Nash and Gary Laffin has got it he's got a lot of possession third time lucky for Gary Laffin and the ball goes over the bar and Wexford extend their lead to two points three attempts at scoring by Gary Laffin in the second half obviously the message was keep trying and Gary has had three attempts and from the third one he got the ninth point for Wexford Wexford won nine a total of 12 and 10 to the Limerick men right now the puck will be taken down on the right by Joe Quaid Frankie Cardle again had possession of the Schlitter when it pucked out that end but his attempt was blocked a massive puck out again dropping 50 yards beyond the 50 yard line Gary Kirby can't get it breaks inside Oh no, Neil and John O'Connor. John O'Connor taps it out along the 14-yard line, goes after it, hits it ground wise out to Rod Guiney. And Guiney gets it out. Mike Hoolan holds it. The strong Mike, 50 yards out, hits it hard inside to the right of the goal and out over the line and wide. Another wide for Limerick. Three in all to seven for Wexford, who had five at half time. Two in the second half. Tom Ryan over the far side of the field. He's not a man that races along the sideline that much, content to stay in the dugout. Puck out will be Damien Fitzhenry as Damien pucking it into the breeze. First puck out for Damien Fitzhenry in the second half and Damien drops it away on the 50-yard line. Far side of the field, blocked and held by Mike Hulhen of Limerick and Hulhen sends it down the field again. Racing out is own O'Neill, back behind there is Colm Kyo, Colm Kyo nipping it up, losing it, diving in, coming up with it again, getting a free out for the Wexford men. The right corner back, the man from halfway house, Bunk Clody, the 23-year-old fitter was the man that won that. And has there been a strike, a strike on Colm Kyo? The ball will be moved out a little bit now. Will there be a booking for anything like that? The ball has certainly been moved out and Liam Griffin is in. Well, he was telling me that his brother Pat and the wife Ursula couldn't make it from England and Liam told me everything I know about hurling. That brother of mine tossed it to me when I was young. The great Jerry O'Malley of Roscommon is in hospital as well. Could we send good wishes to Jerry O'Malley? He'll be back for the football final. And talking about the football, I'm told there's a person here today wearing a Mayo jersey and written on the front of it is, I'm here a little bit early. Early he is, but people that were able to read what's written on the back and the message was, but my mammy is from Limerick. He's somewhere there. Whether he'll go back to Mayo or not, we don't know. The attendance is 65,849. Attention right now for the Wexford right corner back, Colm Kehoe. He's playing uh, on the left full back position there. His position is on the right. Jer Cush now. John O'Connor at full back for Wexford. Jer Cush out in the right corner and Colin Kyo over on the left. Is there a booking now for uh, uh, something? Well, uh, the hill there, there isn't. But there's cheering from the hill. We don't know what it's for, but it's a pity that we have a stoppages like this. The ball boys, of course, very much in action since the game started. There's a Limerick soft warming up down at the canal goal it's young Kevin Shanley who supplies slitters to the goalkeeper the other goal it's young Shane Lynch great cheering as Cullum Kehoe gets up and everything ready for the free out to Damien Fitzhenry and Wexford Damien will place the ball outside his own 21 yard line about Fehas Lock, 20 yards in from the newsstand sideline standing well behind it the striking hardly, not the blocking hardly in hand. In comes Damien, and Damien sends a long, long ball about 90 yards in length. It'll drop outside the 21-yard line, blocked by Stephen McDonough. Out toward the wing, stays in play by Rory McCarthy, taken from him by Adrian Fenlon. Kieran Carey is in there, it goes off for Limerick player, and it's a line ball to the Wexford men. And Wexford doing well since the second half started six minutes ago. Won nine to Wexford and ten points to Limerick. A Limerick sub getting ready in the far side of the field. Adrian Fenland getting ready to take the line ball. 15 yards inside the 50-yard line. 35 out. He'll try and cut this one across the goal if he can. Dropping it into the left. Stephen McDonough lets it run through. It goes wide. Stephen McDonough, whether he intended to block it to capture the ball or not, or he was content to let it run. He motioned with a stick, but he may have been foxing and allowing the ball to go out wide giving their big-hitting goalkeeper Joe Quaid a chance to get Limerick attacking from the puck out. Joe Quaid out the centre it goes, long, long, well inside the 50-yard line again, two yards inside it, Gary Kirby and Liam Dunn. The ball breaks again to Barry Foley. Barry Foley slings it out towards the, the uh, Carlow, Frankie Carlow, beaten inside there by Rod Guiney, and he gets the ball to Aidan Fenlon. Fenlon down the field, blocked by Larry Murphy. Larry Murphy, Wexford, is chopped by David Clark, but it's a free to the Wexford man. 
again the ball Limerick uh, it favoured Limerick inside the 50 yard line again they didn't capitalise on it and Rod Guiney was there to break it out to Fenlon the free now will be taken by Liam Dunn of Wexford Liam Dunn is 71 yards out from his own goal line he's five or six yards in from the new stand sideline about to take a free towards the canal goal Liam Dunn drops it neatly tidy swing dropping it away to the right Tom Dempsey comes across Declan Ash inside him Tom Dempsey has it Gets the crossing ball, real danger ball, the ball is flicked and caught inside by the goalkeeper, came out with it, referee had blown, there's a man in the square, big Gary Laffin was clearly in the square there, tried to flick it back, but Joe Quaid had it in the hand anyway, so it's a free out to Joe Quaid, the quick change of the sticks in there by Joe Quaid, and again, the referee, you see, allow, yes, Dave Clark to get a little bit of attention there to for a knock that he got, uh, Dave Clark out near the sideline and he's getting the attention all right and uh, way down and all right it is Joe Quaid, Joe Quaid of Johan and taking not a puck out but a free from the centre of his own square and then this is a big free dropping about 49 yards out 49 yards out, well held by Frankie Carroll Frankie Carroll, three Wexford men with him moves across, took more than the four steps there the Wexford men, all three stayed with him and it's not a happy day for Frankie Carroll, but maybe before the game is over, that the Gary Spillarn man would do something spectacular that might swing the game for Limerick. They're behind by two points, go nine to ten points. And Liam Don getting ready to take a free that's about 30 yards out of his own goal line in the centre. There's the Michael Kinsel is on the field there with a message. Larry Murphy over the far side of the field and Stephen McDonough with it. McDonough gets it down the field. Rod Guiney behind. Misses the ball. The ball comes to Gary Kirby. Gary Kirby up along the line inside trying to get it home. Oh, no need. It's got out of the wing. TJ Ryan to Gary Spillane and Limerick from the right wing. And the ball has gone over the bar. A wonderful point by TJ Ryan. Oh, no need. Had a hand in it and so had Gary Kirby in breaking the ball out of the wing initially. Attendance is being flashed up again, 69,000. OK, I think I said the had an A and one point between the teams and Wexford leading by that one point. Wexford's last All-Ireland, 1968. Limerick's last All-Ireland, 1973. The puck out is taken, to drop in the 50-yard line. The hand is Sean O'Neill, Sean O'Neill of Limerick. Quickly down, blocked out by Larry O'Gorman, Larry O'Gorman of Wexford. Drops it inside, Martin Story can't get it out, back on Declan Nash, Declan Nash with Limerick. Gets it out toward the 50-yard line, Sean O'Neill tried to get out of Barry Foley, can't get it, it's gone out over the line, the line ball for Wexford and Larry O'Gorman. 70 yards out from the Limerick goal on the Hogan stand side of the field. Larry O'Gorman uh, selected at midfield but playing in the right half back position and the crew caught at Larry, placing the ball about three yards outside the 70-yard line in front of the tunnel here and Larry tried to get a little torstogin of grass on which he'll place the ball. Will he try and cut it across? Will he try and send it inside? A message coming across the field. A Wexford mentor coming across. The referee would be quite right now to book that mentor who came right across the field there, interfering with play. He's now telling Sean O'Neill and George O'Connor to keep back there. Larry O'Gorman had moved the ball nearer the 70-yard line. Larry O'Gorman con concentrating and then hitting a fairly good line ball. Blocked down there. Goes inside. David Cap blocked by Kieran Carey. Kieran Carey boots it out to the wing. Stumbling. Martin Story can't get at it. Flicks the ball out the field. Mike Coolhan tries to get at it and lifts it. Mike Coolhan gives it out to David Clark and David Clark past the centre of the field. Liam Dunn blocks it neatly. Gary Kirby traps it inside. Colm Kew is there and Colm Kew dances and dodges. Gives it to Rod Guiney and Guiney of Wexford quickly down the field. Blocking toward Tom Dempsey. Tom Dempsey tries to get it to Larry Murphy. Larry Murphy blocks. Another magnificent save. In comes Laffin again. Laffin with a chance and Laffin sends the ball over the bar. But 110 yet again to Joe Quaid of Limerick when Larry Murphy bore down on him and then unleashed a hard shot and a spectacular save by Joe Quaid in the Limerick goal and the score following that Limerick that Wexford point by Gary Laffin is now 110 to 11 points a two point lead for the 14 men remember that Eamon Scallion has been sent off in the closing stages of the first half the 14 here comes George O'Connor George O'Connor out toward Larry Murphy leaves it run inside Gary Laffin comes out again. He's won a lot of possession of the Mike Nash, the fullback. Gary Laffin again. 
Gary Laffin, 30 yards out, gives it to Rory McCarthy, tackled by Mark Foley. Mark Foley tried to scoop the ball out. Mike Nash is there, misses the ball. Declan Nash gets it out a little bit. Sean O'Neill tried to scoop it a little bit for them. Rory McCarthy comes out. Rory McCarthy, goal scorer in the semi final, dashing up. Rory McCarthy between the 14 and the 21. Declan Nash tackles him. Kieran Carey comes across. A free end to Wexford for the foul on Rory McCarthy. 21, the foul occurred in the 14 yard line, but all threes in Harley have to be brought out to the 21 yard line if the foul or the infringement of rule occurs inside the 21 yard line. A few sticks have been chained. One given to the great George O'Connor before the game. He told me, well, it's a long time to be waiting for the honour to play in an All Ireland final, but it's been worth it. A Limerick sub coming on to the field. We'll check who's going off and who could it be Owen O'Neill still suffering from that injury. They, Rory McCarthy is OK. The piece of paper has been given to the referee, Pat Horden, on the Limerick team. Haven't seen anyone go, go off yet. Yes, Owen O'Neill is eventually coming off the Limerick team. The player who was doubtful in account of an ankle injury coming on to the Limerick team now. It is uh, Pordick Tobin. Hordick Tobin, a man that scored two goals against Cork. The free has been taken and the free has been sent over the bar by Tom Dempsey. I wasn't looking, in fact, when it was scored, but Hordick Tobin, a man that scored two goals for Limerick in the championship against Cork, he's on the Limerick team. Does that mean that they think they might need a goal to win this game? Wexford got the goal clear. John O'Connor at full back for Wexford, Jerk Cush on the right, Colm Q on the left, and there uh, over on the far side of the field. Limerick attacking at the ball, being cleared out there. A chance now for Mike Hoolan. Hoolan gives it to David Clark. David Clark at 50 yards out. Genoflex and strikes, and it's held by Damien Fitzhenry. Damien Fitzhenry has tackled as he cleared the ball. That might be a free. Larry Murphy come. Referee waves on play. It could have been a free from where the ball landed. Larry Murphy, 30 yards out. Larry Murphy, 21 yards out. A chance into Gary Laffin. Big Gary is blocked by Stephen McDonough. Stephen McDonough to Mike Hula and Kieran Carey. Kieran Carey to McDonough. And McDonough emerges and clears and sends Limerick attacking. What a game as the ball breaks in the right wing. And TJ Ryan turns and gets away from Co. TJ Ryan of Limerick has it. 21 yards out. Gets it low inside. John O'Connor blocks it. John can't get it. Pardick Tobin has it. Pardick Tobin gets it inside now to Barry Foley. Barry Foley is beaten by Damien Fitzhenry. And the ball ricochets out and Liam Dunn reacts and comes and gets and strikes and clears and sends it 90 yards down the field. Tom Dempsey comes out. Declan Nash comes in. The ball is, goes off a Limerick man. It's a Wexford line ball there. Great defence down at one end of the field for one moment by Joe Quaid. At the other end by an equally brilliant goalkeeper, Damien Fitzhenry. 14 players by Wexford, 15 by Limerick, quite a lot of time to go yet. We've 14 minutes and 50 seconds gone, over 20 minutes to go. The line ball will be Adrian Fenlands, it's a little less than 60 yards out in the Limerick goal in the Hogan stand side of the field. Magnificent contest between two very fit and fast teams. A bad line ball sent back by George O'Connor to a defender to Larry O'Gorman. O'Gorman is 52 yards out long and high by Larry O'Gorman. preparing for the bicentenary celebration in 1989 well they've got four points clear won 12 to 11 points and one would wonder which team has the 14 men Pardick Tobin and the Limerick team as I told you and Owen O'Neill is the player that's gone off the Limerick team was it a mistake to play in George O'Connor tapping the ball to Adrian Fenland. Fenland passed the 70 yard line. Adrian Fenland lifting it. He's in a lovely position. On the side, the 50 yard line. Is this another point? No, that's a bad why. That's a bad why there now by Adrian Fenland. He wasn't under pressure, but then he had travelled a long way, perhaps a little bit out of breath. It stays at 112 to Wexford. Ian Cooleen, Deog, Egg Limnock, Egan Bintishaw, August Alcuin, Norm Shane, Norm the Deog, and Darrell Emeher. The puck out will come from Joe Quaid down on the right. Remember 94, that's the thought running through the minds of the Limerick men right now. The ball comes to Kieran Carey. Kieran Carey is 60 yards out to the ball. He's gone over the ball by Kieran Carey. Kieran Carey, has he moved out to the centre of the field? He's manning a centre field bat now with David Clark. Yes, they're now playing Kieran Carey as the loose man. Yes, David Clark gone in on Martin Storey. And Steve McDonough come out to pick up Larry Murphy and leaving the roving commission to Kieran Carey. I wonder how will it work. No better man to rove if he can get the Schlitter. 
down it comes again sometimes the roving man can get lost the ball breaks behind will it be Martin Storey Martin Storey yes inside the 50 yard line near the sideline the sun breaking out the ball into the safe hands of Joe Quaid Joe Quaid is tackled by Tom Dempsey a free out of the referee from the edge of the square well Wexford well they'll try and slow up the play right now it will be interesting what type of role Kieran Carey will will play will he move up and attack or will he hang around and try and get the broken ball a difficult thing to utilize the extra man the free will be out to Joe Quaid the sun breaks out and the people on Hill 16 they're basking in the sunshine as Joe Quaid strikes the free not that long it just got beyond the second 70 yard line Eddie Fenland jumped up and the ball broken down now by Rory McCarthy out to the right wing racing out to get it now is Gary Kerby or Davy Davy Foley and Matt Foley. Matt Foley tries a long ball for Limerick. This will drop around the edge of the square. Can they keep it and play? The backs and the forwards are in. The first signal of a wide ball came from Damien Fitzhenry. Quickly followed by the umpire. The ball is wide. It will be a puck out for Damien Fitzhenry. 1-12 to 12 points and Kieran Carey the scorer of the last point. A goal between them and we've 17 and a half minutes gone. 17 and a half to go. The puck will be Damien Fitzhenry's the way down on the left in front of the railway goal. Sun in his eyes and Damien is not worried about sun, rain, hail or snow right now. Only the Slither and only the All-Ireland final and back goes Declan Ash to get it for Limerick. Declan Ash sends it down. The breeze is with Limerick in the second half but Wexford not worried about the breeze. The ball breaks out now towards the Damien Quigley. Damien Quigley tried to get the ball up front to the stick. He's got it. John O'Connor with him. Damien Quigley's hand pass out and deflected out by Rod Guiney. Rod Guiney struggling now with Frankie Carroll. Frankie Carroll trying to move inside. Takes a tackle, gets the ball out in the right wing. A shot will break inside. Jerkush races. The Loffer gets it, and the boot clears it out the field, and Fenland breaks it. Great fire in the Limbic man, the Wexelman. Martin Story had got it from Adrian Fenland. Martin Story had pulled to the ground and a free into the Wexelman. A free into Wexford, and already Tom Dempsey had come along to volunteer to take it. The free is almost 60 yards out. Mark Foley, he apparently asked the referee how much time to go because the referee looked at it what? And I'm sure the answer was, well, something like 17 minutes or there, maybe 16 minutes. Tom Dempsey to take a vital free. Is that Mike Galligan about to come on to the team for Limerick? Tom Dempsey now attempting to put the Wexford men four points ahead. This is a crucial stage of the game. Crucial stage of the game. The sub has come on the Limerick team. All right, it's Brian Tobin. Brian Tobin now has come on to the Limerick team and who's gone off? We look on the far side of the field, we check who's gone off, the free is taken by Tom. It's gone and the ball has gone over the bar. TJ Ryan has gone off the Limerick team. TJ Ryan has gone off and Brian Tobin is on. We've Pordick Tobin, we've Pordick Tobin on now and Brian Tobin has come on. The uh, TJ, TJ Ryan has definitely gone off. And Brian Tobin has gone in at the corner and forward position. And here comes Gary Kirby. Gary Kirby for Limerick on the right wing. Hits it hard. Breaks inside. Tried to get at it. In there with Barry Foley. Handled the ball in the ground. And it's a free out. It's a free out to the Wexford players. And they're really playing as if, and it does, everything does depend on what happens in the remaining 15 minutes of this All Ireland final. Wexford already four points ahead. Wexford with the 14 men. Limerick with the 15, and they brought on two substitutes already. And Damien Fitzhenry getting ready to take this free for the Wexford men outside his own 21 yard line. He will certainly strike it long. Long it is. It will drop almost the 21 yard line. Away over in the far side of the field, broken down by Steve Madonna, but in to get it is Adrian Fenland. Fenland gets it inside. The ball missed by Gary Laffin, tapped out by Stephen McDonough. McDonough can't get at it. Tapped again by Gary Laffin. Mike Nash pulls, doesn't make contact with the Schlitter. The ball to Tom Dempsey. Wexford playing the better hurling right now. The ball sent across. Davy Clark goes across. Larry Murphy comes in, but Clark comes out. Chopped, and it's a free out there. That's quite right, a free out there. Larry O'Gorman was in there, and so was Martin Storey. Definitely free out there. Davy Clark was fouled. It's a free to Limerick. Limerick would need to do a score shortly. Brian Tobin, he's a mongrel player, and Pordick Tobin is some kill mallet. The free are taken down in the goal now. Gary Kirby misses it. Referee is calling. Referee is calling for something again. Had that free, or is he calling for the free out there? The quick free was taken, and the long one was just a puck out for Damien Fitzhenry. And Limerick getting a little bit rattled right now. They're four points behind, 14 minutes to go to the end of the game. They were beaten by a storming finish in 1994 by the men of Offaly. 
could they put in a storming finish today to take it away from Wexford? That will be the intention, that'll be the aim. Can they do it with the extra man? We'll have to wait and see. Damien Fitzhenry with the puck out. The free out, the free out will land 60 yards out. Sean O'Neill not much in the game. Martin Story coming more into it as the game goes on. On the 50-yard line to the right and wide. Another wide for Wexford. Ten and all is against four for Limerick. But Wexford definitely the dominant team in the second half. The breeze behind them. Limerick, they haven't got going and they have never really got going consistently in the centre of the field since the game started. Plenty of time yet to win or to lose in all Ireland. Over it goes. Frankie Carlin flicks it inside. Hardik Tobin comes out. The ball breaks and there's Colin Pugh to knock it out again. Liam Dunn is in there. And the ball sent out to the wing down on the far side of the field. And it's sent now by, by Hardik Tobin. And the ball has gone wide to the right. A disheartening wide for the Limerick man, Hardik Tobin, the striker. Wexford man, Jeff Cush, as he went by, a tap in the back for Larry O'Gorman and saying we're on the run for home. 22 minutes and 42 seconds gone. One thirteen to 12 points and Wexford leading the score. The crucial one, the goal was scored by Tom Dempsey. Wexford attacking from the puck out. David Clark tried to break it out, palmed it out. Kieran Carey can't get at the ball. Wexford has sent out, sent to Mike Hoolan. Quickly down the field, this is a danger ball, Damien quickly can't get at it. Damien Fitzhenry waves and waves and plays and plays and the ball rolls and goes out over the line and wide. A snapshot from Mike Hoolahan, 80 yards out. Perfect ball if a forward was ready to come on to it. Damien quickly wasn't and Damien, the man that scored two goals and a point in the All-Ireland final against uh, Offaly. He's the man that was nearest to it but couldn't make it. The referee, Pat Horden, is coming in now. Is uh, an injury now to Jer Cush, and is this tactics or is it a genuine injury? A genuine injury it is. Jer Cush, the Nevena, the self-employed 29-year-old, a great, uh, great character, playing at right full-back, normally known as a full-back. So the referee has sorted everything out and will resume with a puck out for Damien Fitzhenry. We've 12 minutes or less than 12 minutes of actual time left. Limerick stars that haven't shone yet today. Gary Kirby might do something before the end of the game. Kieran Carey, the loose man. Here comes Gary Kirby. Gary Kirby is 70 yards out. Strikes it long. This is a long, long ball. Again to the left and gone out over the line. And another wide. Another wide. Two wides in a row here now by the Limerick men. Brian Tobin and Brian Arpardic Tobin won another by Gary Kirby. Still four points between the team. Still, it's the men of Wexford ahead. 113 to 12 points. Look, Garman, Contossing, Agus, Pockamacht, and Goldgaard, and Jamie and Fitzhenry. Fitzhenry is down to the outside the upright of the goal in front of Hill 16. Damien Fitzhenry, the Duffley Rover, coming and striking and dropping it past the 70 yard line beyond midfield. Sean O'Neill, beaten by George O'Connor to Martin Storey. Storey is 60 yards out, and look at the goal, a shot, but it goes to wide and goes wide, 11 wide. The wides are creeping up for the second half. Limerick had only two wides in the first half, and so far they have five wides in the second. Wexford, five in the first and six in the second. The tension is gripping them. 25 minutes gone, 10 to go. Four points between the team. An All-Ireland final of 1996 and the greatest game in the world, the game of Harley. The ball over the head of Sean O'Neill. Blocked down and Larry O'Gorman, the man of the spirit, comes forward for Wexford. He's well hooked by Damien Quigley, but it's a free and a foul since the referee, the free will be to Wexford. Things going Wexford's way right now. What a year so far for Wexford beating Kilkenny in the opening round and that's something any day of the year for Wexford people to beat Kilkenny next it was Dublin then it was Offaly, then it was Galway right now they're in serious contest against the champions of Munster Limerick 25 minutes and 45 seconds gone Wexford leading by 4 points the free to be taken by Liam Dunn Liam Dunn drops it left to the goal inside the 40 yard line, knocked out by the Limerick man by Colin, can't get at it in there Tom Dempsey Two Limerick players breaking it out to the wing and Mike Hoolahan is there. Mike Hoolahan has it. Back behind. Throws it out and goes after it himself. Sent back inside by Gary Laffin. He's done an awful lot of hard industrial work for the Wexford men today. He's got a lot of the ball. He's the army man from Glyn Town, 21 years of age. 
and a line ball is coming up to the Limerick man and Mike Hoolan will take it behind his own 50 yard line Mike Hoolan slices it in beyond the centre of each on answer the ball breaks out on the side of the field now trying to get at it there is Barry Foley not in the game in the second half corner four behind the foot the ball in the 50 yard line nobody seemed to get it in and out it's eventually sent tonight by Frankie Carroll Jack Cush it behind Jer Kush, the powerful Kush, gets it 50 yards further out. Kiran Kerry has it again. Kiran Kerry leaves it behind, jabs it up. He's 60 yards out. He's gone on a road. He's outside the 50 yard line. He's on his own. He tries to shot him outside the 50 yard line, and the ball goes wide. And that's another serious wide. Another serious wide for the Limerick men. Kieran Kerry being utilised as the loose man. Not a lot of loose play is coming his way. Very, very difficult to figure out how to use the extra man. Wicks with the man short, here they come, Rory McCarthy, Rory McCarthy down the right, out comes Mike Nash the guard at the full back from South Liberty's a shoulder but holds a feet and sends a raking clearance away way down the field, dropping 40 yards out, blocked again by Jer Kush, what a game the big fella's having, to George O'Connor, drops it and drop, pucks it across the far side of the field, Adrian Fenland ahead of Mike Hoolan, Adrian Fenland for Wexford, this is the moment, the ball blocked by Stephen McDonough, Brewery the farmer down the field, Blocked to the 50 yard line, races inside, referee give me a free out there as Larry O'Gorman cleared it. Referee had signalled for a foul on Liam Dunn by Gary Kirby. And is the final sub been brought in by the Limerick men? They've already brought on the two Tobins. Is Thornlock Herbert coming in now onto the Limerick team? Surprising that Mike Galligan hasn't been introduced because the weakness has been up forward. Thorlock Herbert or coming on now is Thorlock Herbert on the Limerick team and we'll check who's going off nobody gone off yet Billy Borden, I'd say Billy Borden will soon yes, the star of the first half for Limerick Barry Foley, the 19 year old from Partridge well, he's been replaced by the Ahan man Thorlock Herbert, it's a great name Wexford attacking again Larry Murphy in the far side of the field being beaten by Stephen McDonough McDonough along the line outside the 50, outside the 70 inside the 70, across field drops it inside the 50 yard line will the break come to Damien Quigley no, back out John O'Connor and John sends it out the field Herbert leaves it to Shane O'Neill and back behind it Larry O'Gorman and Larry O'Gorman spins it down the field blocked by Mike Nash hooshes it out, goes after it pulls, goes after it, lifts and strikes and gets it to Kieran Carey. Kieran Carey, 60 yards of his own goal. The Schnitzel is about to drop inside the 40 yard line, the other side of the field. Tobin can't get it. They're pulling at it inside. Gary Kirby is in there. Referee is in there. Referee a long way behind the play. I would imagine it will be a throw in on the 21 yard line. A throw in. Gary Kirby was in there. The man that scored the two goals against Cork was in there. I'd be surprised if the referee did anything other than bring the ball out to the 21, select two, and throw it in. Billy Borden is about to make his appearance on the Wexford team. Billy Borden, the man that came on and scored a crucial goal in the All-Ireland semi-final. A man that has been a great servant of football and hardly in Wexford for a long number of years. But Billy Borden, easily identified, wearing 21, who's gone off the Wexford team? Right now on the far side of the field, Billy Borden is definitely up. Is it Larry Murphy? I don't see Larry Murphy around anywhere. Looking around for Larry, he was in the left half forward position and Billy Borden will take up position somewhere down in that half of the field. Damien Fitzhenry taking a little breather, receiving a little bit of attention. We're in the final five minutes of the All-Ireland final. Wexford 113, Limerick 12 points. Billy Borden makes a run down the field and the Wexford people everywhere, they're saying, we hope it happens for Billy. We hope it happens for George. Larry Murphy is the man that's gone up to make space for Billy Borden. And Billy, interestingly, is going at full forward with Laffin gone out to the corner forward. Laffin has been roving all day. Here the, the ball breaks to Kieran Carey. Kieran Carey gets it out now to Thornlock Herbert. Herbert strikes and the ball goes wide. Another wide for the Limerick players. Another wide for the Limerick players. They've had about four wides in succession there from scorable position and four points separate the team right now with Wexford heading for their sixth All-Ireland Wexford last won in 1968 the puck out will be taken any second now by Damien Fitzhenry down on the left Damien Fitzhenry striking it and dropping it away, away down outside the 50 yard line knocked down by Mike Hoolan Mike Hoolan to Gary Kirby, Liam Dunn is with him Liam Dunn has created, played a crafty game Rod Guy Neal behind the ball breaks out of the wing. Limerick now hunting and packed, but back goes Adrian Fenland. The ball out over the line up to stick a Fenland. The line ball coming up to the Limerick men. 
Matt Foley has gone up, but he'll leave the striking to Mike Hoolan. This is a one that might bring a goal. Mike Hoolan hits them hard and they travel a long way. He's inside the 50-yard line. I'd anticipate it. No, he sent it out to David Clark. David Clark is outside the 50-yard line. Davey will go for the point. Strikes it. It's gone over the bar. And there's only a goal between the team. And we have four minutes left in the game. Plus, I would say, about two minutes of injury time. One goal between the team. The Limerick Wides have added up to nine. Wexford now have scored 11 Wides, if you count Wides as being scored. Damien Fitzhenry, what excitement here in Croke Park right now. A goal between the team. We've heard and dreamt of last-minute goals, swinging and winning All-Ireland final. The puck is over the far side of the field. Herbert is in there, the ball break back to David Clark again. David Clark without catching sends it away down the field. The break will be vitally well blocked there by Liam Dunn. John O'Connor is in there as well, standing the ball breaks out of the week. And out come, is it Column Q again? Colum Q comes, makes a lot of ground and sends the ball out over the line and another line ball coming up for Mike Hoolan. Will he try and tap another short one? Or will he try the long one? There's a goal between the teams. Is there a goal? They will remember what happened at this stage in the All-Ireland final two years ago. Mike Hulham gets a good one in toward the goal. Dangerous ball. Gary Kirby's in there. They are back there as Martin Storey. Storey has lost the ball, but he doubled on it and sent it out the field. The man that played hockey for Leinster used to striking the ground ball. Wexford come away in the far side of the field. The ball by Rory McCarthy. Away way down the field. Desperation now on, on all sides. Back out Mike Nash. Mike Nash gets it for the limited man. He'll try a long one. The long one sends it 80 yards down the field. Drops it inside the 50-yard line. Everything. The ball now being held. And the ball now being held and sent in by Kieran Carey. And the ball has gone over the bar. The ball has gone over the bar by the captain Kieran Carey. And now there's only two points between the team. Two minutes and less than two minutes. Plus, I would say, another two minutes. Are we about to see a last-minute goal for Limerick? Are we about to see another score for Wexford? Could we see a draw? Managers, mentors and everything coming onto the field now. Damien Fitzhenry hops the schnitter off the ground. Ray McMahon is racing down along the line to be in a position for the presentation, if there is a presentation. Damien Fitzhenry, they're down to 14 men for a long time, but they're leading by two points. Damien Fitzhenry, possession now is absolutely vital for both teams. Out it comes, George O'Connor's hand goes up, it breaks behind, Declan Ash gets it for Limerick, Declan Ash up along the line, hand passing the ball back to David Clark, David Clark tries a high ball, this will drop between the 14 and the 21, John O'Connor stays behind Colin Floyd, breaks it, John O'Connor gets the pull down toward the wing, Colin Q is there again, what a finish the man is having, he's lost the ball, the ball is now sent inside, blocked behind by Larry O'Gorman, but it comes down inside now to the number 22, Brian Tobin, Brian Tobin going inside, smothered and beaten and swamped as the Wexford men come out, and the ball being brought out now by Liam Dunn, and Liam Dunn has made a great run. He's on the 50-yard line from the goal mount, down along the line, trying to get the ball. Liam Dunn still slides to the ground, hand passing the ball. Kieran Carey holding it. Kieran Carey trying to get away from Martin Story. Kieran Carey flicks the ball to Mike Hoolan. Back goes Story, and Story robs it and sends it out. Billy Bottom beaten by Mike Knight. The ball breaks out now on this side of the field, and the ball now coming to Wex, but some Paul Finn is out. Paul Finn is beaten. Stephen McDonough gets it, away down the field, blocked the ball by Adrian Fennell, and he's played a useful game for Wexford, down along the wing, tackled and gets it to Tom Dempsey, over the head of Dempsey, Dempsey might yet get it, back he goes, Declan Nash goes with him, Tom Dempsey near the sideline, then Nasher has it, the Nasher tried to come out, the hand pass back to the brother, Mike gets it, this side of the field, David Clark is loose, David Clark is 40 yards of his own goal, gets it away in this side of the field now, and the ball being blocked in this side of the field now, it's now being held by Brian Tobin, Brian Tobin gets it in, Anything can happen. Colin Kyo blocks it down. Adrian Fenlon is back there. They're pulling and pulling and pulling. The ball blocked. Is it Colin Kyo again trying to come out with the ball? Or is it Liam Dunn, the centre back? It was Liam Dunn and it's a free out. Terrific defending. And we have gone 30 seconds into injury time. 30 seconds into injury time. And Wexford are leading. 113 to 14 points. How much injury time will the referee allow? Two points between the teams. The linesman is in, the referee is in, the linesman is in, indicating the spot there. Linesman, linesman in this match, Willie Barrett is one of them and Jimmy Cooney's the other. Liam Griffin is on the field. Damien Fitzhenry has come out to take the free. He's to come out to take the free. There's a sub coming on. A sub coming on to the Wexford team now. All these things will delay a little bit of time, but the referee is a wise man and he'll add it on. Is it Paul Codd who's come on? 
it looks like Paul Codd, Damien Fitzhenry takes the free, dropped it away, way down the field, yes, Paul Codd is on, dropped it in the 21-yard line, tried to get inside to Tom Dempsey, Tom Dempsey tried to get it inside, Stephen McDonald there to break it out, comes after it, he's on the 21, he's being pursued, and this is the relentless pursuit of Billy Borden and Tom Dempsey, gets the ball towards Kieran Carey, Kieran Carey holds it, it's Kieran Carey hand passes the ball, but gives it away to Larry O'Gorman, Larry O'Gorman, a free to Limerick for the foul, and Kieran Carey as he gave the ball out to the centre of the field. Now, what do Limerick do? We've two minutes played. Do they lob it in and hope for a last-minute goal that could give them victory? Will they go for the point and hope for the other one because we did have a lot of stoppages? Who will the striker be? Will it be Mike Hulhen? Will it be David Clark? Will it be Kieran Carey? Will it be Gary Kirby? The free is in the centre of the field. 80 yards out, the striker will be Mike Hulhen. Mike Hulhen in the centre of the GA crest in the centre of the field. Hits it very, very hard. It breaks inside. It's blocked. Of men that won in 68. Pat Nolan, Tom Neville, Eddie Kelly, and Ed Colfer will go down to Brian Catley right away down on the field. Wexford, the champions of Ireland in Harlem. We will go Griffin. Brian Carty, are you there? I'm back! I'm Brian Carty, I would say, is swamped by Wexford followers. We'll give him a chance to get his breath. Vinny Staples, Dan Quigley, Willie Murphy, Phil Wilson, Dave Burnley, Paul Lynch, Tony Jordan, Rusty Jacob. Jimmy O'Brien, Shanks Whalen and Jack Berry and John quickly came on. I wonder if Brian Cathy on the field. <laughs> thanks for the God, thanks for the God. Thanks for the God. Thanks for the God. I have Liam Griffin with me. Liam Griffin, Wexford manager, congratulations. No, I want to talk to Brian. You yeah, thanks a lot, Brian. Thank you. Fantastic day for Wexford. Greatest day of our lives. We're back at the top. We're delighted to be back at the top. I'm thrilled for all the Wexford people, all here, all overseas. And those kids, those kids, that's what I'm happy for. I'm not sure I think they can hear us, Liam Griffin. This is the most magnificent day ever. Fantastic. It's the greatest day of my life. And I'll tell you something, we've got the guts. The blood in our veins is perfect. Let me go, Brian. Liam, before you go, you were saying about the mammy praying to... Yes, uh, Ladies uh, Island last Talbot night. Everybody, Matt Talbot, I swear to God, I prayed to him all along for the whole championship. Serious, And our lady as well, I swear to God, that's true. And I don't want to get carried away. What did you say when Eamon Scallon went off? I said nothing except we've got to dig deeper. We killed ourselves all the year. We had to dig and dig and dig and show the blood in Wexford's veins. That's what it is. Liam Griffin, thank you very much. Thank you, Liam Griffin. OK, Brian, uh, that's great to hear Liam Griffin so soon after the end of the game, and he is one excited man, there's no doubt about that. Liam Griffin talking about the guts displayed by Wexford there. The final score, just in case you didn't hear it, in the bedlam there, a Wexford won 13, Limerick 14 points, a two-point win for Wexford, and in the minor match earlier on, it finished in a draw, Galway and Tipperary 3-11 to Tipperary's 20 points. An absolutely... Uh, nail-biting finish there just two points between the two teams in the end Wexford the champions let's go to Tom Rooney at pitch side actually we'll come back to Tom there's a slight with all the crowds around the equipment they're uh, giving us one or two problems so we'll come back to Tom in a second in fact uh, we'll be talking to the panel as well here uh, Jer Cunningham Tom Hellebert and Johnny Dooley and hopefully Tom has escaped as uh, the people around him and I believe he's with Tom Ryan Tom Rooney Hello, Tom Ryan is with me. Tom, a sad day for you today. Well, it's not a sad day. You know, we, we, we come up here today expecting to win in all Ireland. We didn't win one. But we have to congratulate Wexford to play a wonderful game of holding out there, even with the 14 minutes through the second half. We congratulate him on a great performance, and we'll be, we'll be back again. The extra man seemed more a hindrance than a help. Well, the, well, that often happens, you know. The extra man often creates more of a problem than it is a help. But in saying that, like, uh, we missed a lot of chances, scoreable chances. You know, we were just beaten by two points at the end, of the, the end of the game. We were coming to grips with it again in the last five minutes, but it was too late, and Wexford wasn't, wasn't going to let the, the, the grip off the cup, you know. Easy for me to say it on the sideline, but given an extra man and you have a sharp shooter like Mike Galligan, would you not give him space? Well, yeah, that's, I suppose that's a fact, you know, there'll be all sorts of uh, permutations as to what should have been done and what wasn't done, but, you know, really out there the day, some of our forwards didn't play up to, didn't play up to what we expected them to and didn't take the chance that it came that way, but that's, that's life, that's the way it goes. Well done, Tom, and Thank hard you very much. much. 
That's Tom Ryan speaking with uh, Tom Rooney and uh, dreadful, dreadful disappointment uh, for Limerick, of course, after 1994 as well. Johnny Dooley, uh, at halftime there, you did make the point that the extra man mightn't necessarily be the, the bonus that Limerick were looking for, and that's the way it turned out. Uh, yes, that's true, yeah. Um, on a couple of occasions there, um, when Limerick had the free man, they weren't really using him to their advantage. He was roving around the middle of the pitch and he wasn't really getting involved in the play. I think Dave Clark was the free man in the second half and he wasn't picking up any loose balls. Uh, they weren't hitting the puck out to him. He just wasn't getting involved in the play and that's exactly what happened. Um, didn't work to their advantage. Absolutely great news for Wexford though and for Wexford hurling, Tom. Absolutely. I mean, when you look at the pitch and see the way George O'Connor was engulfed by the crowd and guys like Tom Dempsey and, and others, it's a, it's a very emotional day because these guys have worked for 17, 18, 19 years for this day and it's all come together right now and we were just talking before the game when we were trying to decide how to go the word fairy tale was used and here we have it again like last year and again this year and it's just like a jigsaw falling into place OK, Ger, we'll get a word from you in a second but I think Jack Boothman has a few words to say and then I'm sure Martin Story will have a few words to say as well let's hear them Two great teams playing hurling with all the true spirit and passion that hurling deserves to be played with Congratulations, of course, go to Wexford. A magnificent achievement coming from back last, last May. Starting last May in Leicester and achieving the almost impossible feat of taking home the Lee McCarthy Cup to Wexford. Don't forget, it takes two teams to make a great game. And our... Apart our condolences go to Limerick today to hurl their hearts out on the day they just were not strong enough to defeat the passion of the Wexford team. I want to thank uh, Guinness Ireland for their excellent sponsorship of these championships. They have brought extra passion, extra colour to the All Ireland series. And uh, I thank Colin Starr, who is here beside me, for his contribution to the game of hurling. So let's get to Oswald and Cotton Shaw, my brother, and then Captain Martin Story. They're waiting for it. They've waited a long time. This is what Martin Story has dreamed about. The team of 68 can take a back seat. It's now about the men of 96. Wexford are the All-Ireland hurling champions. It's been a wonderful championship, the Skinner's Hurling Championship, and Wexford emerged victorious. Out there on the Heron, out there on coming Low Class Grail, a Carter, Augustine and Lock Harmon. And Karen Shaw had Locker, and Hun Fernamani of the Lock Armin, Officer Hun Winter Lock Armin. It's Father Tommy McFannock, and Shaw, I was Tan La Untak, Lamar, and they doing Galea, I was Beg, Crack a Queen, and Shafton Shaw Coing, I was on me Shaw Coing. and the Wexford team. I can't describe to you what it meant to be. It's been a, a boyhood dream of mine to Harlan Crow Park. That was my dream. The hello to captain of Wexford team and a great Wexford team to victory. <laughs> La Ladies and gentlemen, we've been described as the bridesmaids of Harlan. Well, today we got married. <laughs> Now, I want to start a few thank yous, and if I leave anyone out, please forgive me because I don't know what really I'm saying up here. First of all, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Wexford Creamery, who stuck with us through thick and thin, and at last we brought them a bit. 
I'd like to thank the Wexford County Board. I suppose they were, they were getting to the stage that they were nearly getting fed up sending teams to Crow Park. But at last we won something for them. Most, most importantly, I'd like to thank you, the people of Wexford, who stuck with us through take and take. Hello, right, Wexford! I'd like... I'd like to thank our doctor, Dr. Stephen Bow. I'd like to thank our three physios and our trainer, Sean Collier, Pat Whitney, Chris Claremore, and Aidan O'Connor, who done the bandaging for us, and our special friend, Neil Fitzpatrick. <laughs> now, I would like to thank Rory Kinsley and Seamus Barron for the work that they have done for us and they have done an unbelievable amount of work for us for the last two years. Now, I would like to thank one man that has made all this possible for us. People, people in Wexford didn't hear of Liam Griffin. But I'll tell you one thing, the whole world knows Liam Griffin now. Liam Griffin! Thing. But Liam Griffin really is the Messiah. Even though he says he's not, he's our Messiah. He led us to victory. Now I would like to thank Limerick. Limerick gave us a very tough and a sporting match and a hard match and a physical match. And I would like you to give three cheers at me for Limerick. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Now go with a move! It's a very happy Martin story there and a very, very happy crowd on the pitch there. Wexford, they've waited a long, long time for this. And as uh, Martin was saying there, um, there's going to be a party in Limerick for at least a week, maybe a month. Could be more. The final score, 113, Limerick 14 points. We'll be talking more to the panel here. We've lots more people to speak to at Croke Park. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. When you think about it, forklift trucks really do a hell of a job. All that lifting and shifting of heavy loads. That's why you need a hell of a good forklift. One that gives you a hell of a higher performance at a hell of a lower cost. What forklift trucks am I talking about? Halla, of course. Halla forklifts. High in performance, lower in cost. To find out more, free phone 1-800-211-212. One hell of a forklift. For all that matters in Gaelic games. The referee looks at his watch. It's all over. Tomorrow, for the best coverage of the Wexford Limerick clash, read me Hall Amara Hertig only in the Star. Recapture the excitement of the All Ireland hurling final tomorrow only in the Star. For all that matters. And you're very welcome back to Croke Park. You're listening to RT Radio Sport coming to you from here on All-Ireland Hurling Final Day. And Wexford are the champions. They've won 113 to Limerick's 14 points. Ger Cunningham, we were just looking at the monitor there during to uh, Martin Story's uh, speech and the faces on some of those Wexford players, the likes of George O'Connor. You can see what this means to them. Oh, it's only fantastic for them, Con. I don't think they will realise what they've done until they wake up tomorrow morning. I think, you know, they're so hyped up for the whole occasion. Going in at half time with a man down and a, they, were two, they were a point ahead, it, they, were, they were really up against it. And to come out in the second half and to perform the way they did, it was only fantastic. It'll take them a couple of days for it to sink into what they've done. Uh, they played superbly and happy congratulations to them. Tom Hellebert, where did it go wrong for Limerick, do you think? I think the, the, their failure to deal with the extra man was their biggest downfall. Uh, several times during the second half, uh, their two wing backs in particular took up great positions uh, in the middle of the park and they failed to find them. Uh, a couple of times a day they got two or three nice points from that type of setup, but they didn't do it often enough. 
Uh, they, they persist with hitting long balls. They had two or three very silly wides. Uh, they hit a little lot of long ball, which uh, the, the Wexford keeper was happy to let go wide. And they just didn't play it with any pattern. And uh, you have to, when you have an extra man, you have to create space, you have to bring him into the game, you have to work to, to, to tear apart the opposition. And they just didn't do that. They played a very dull pattern of hurling and it didn't expose Wexford at all. Is that not something, though, that they would have spoken about at halftime? You'd have spoken about it, but it's very hard to implement it. Uh, in fairness to Wexford, they harried very well, they tackled, they put themselves about, and when they got the opportunity, they created the extra man. And in fairness to their keeper, Fitzroy, he found particularly Rory McCarthy on a couple of occasions and totally exposed Limerick. And it looked for a while that, that they, they were going to run, run away with the game if they had got a few more scores. I mean, they created more scoring chances in the second half than Limerick did. And that shouldn't be the case, playing with an extra man and whatever slight breeze there was. Yeah. Johnny Dooley, Limerick in the first half, I think only had two or three wides in the whole of the half. In the second half, they had a lot of wides, and, and it has cost them. Uh, definitely, yeah. Um, they had to, like, you can't afford to have wides, especially in the second half um, today. Like, uh, was playing with the extra man and everything, like, they were getting the chance, but they weren't just putting them away. Um, I think with about, uh, we've made a comment at about, I think, 35 minutes gone, that only two points scored from playing the second half. You can't expect to win in All-Ireland scoring two points in the second half. And Wexford had all the play. They were all over them. They were the more physical team and, and generally they, they deserve to win on the day, I thought. You know? yeah. Looking at the second half, I was aware of Limerick and the fact that they've come back in so many matches during this campaign that I was kind of expecting a last minute or a last sort of 10 or 15 minute burst by them, but it never really materialised at all. It's very difficult, Colin, when you, in, in, during the pattern of the second half, they weren't playing well. Like they said, they had an extra man, they never used the extra man to any advantage at all. It was very difficult for them to get into a pattern, even though you were expecting to come at the end that the, the extra man would tell. They had no pattern to their play and they never used the extra man and it's just, it's, it cost them at the end. Yeah, there were 17 or 18 heroes for Wexford, I suppose, but are there a couple that you would pick out in particular? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a very good uh, team performance. They, every one of them worked very hard. Every one of them remained completely committed from start to finish. Uh, a couple of guys spring to mind. I, I thought Damien Fitzgerald was excellent in goal. Absolutely.